today, a select group of 12 year olds, one team from the east, the other from the west, meet in the suburbs of Atlanta to play a little baseball. But these are not your typical 12 year olds. They hit for power, make circus catches, throw hard, pick grounders clean. They have all the tools, can play ball and have a ton of fun doing it. It's summer, it's kids, it's baseball. Well, you select that. Welcome back to Atlanta, Georgia and the historic East Cobb Complex. We are so excited to be back here for Perfect Games 12U Select Festival. 32 of the best players in North America, Venezuela and Puerto Rico. I'm Danny Wexelman with Marlon Anderson. Marlon, I know you're excited to be back here. You were here last weekend for the 11U Select Festival, but now it's their turn. What are you most looking forward to with these guys? Well, just seeing the true talent that they have, you know, and being able to come out here and as quickly as possible, forget about the TV cameras being around, forget about all the crowd, and just being able to go out there and play and show their true talents. Yeah, they've been out here for a couple of days. They've got their face paint on. They've got a crowd here. These guys out here to watch them, too. What was baseball like for you, though, at 12 years old? Well, it definitely wasn't like this, but I, I like the fact that they get to play so much baseball on great fields against great competition and again it's only going to make them better going forward and for me that's what I love about this these guys coming out here loving the game and pu putting their best uh, effort out every single night no doubt we are moments away you're going to meet these young men on the field soon and we'll be back for perfect games 12 you select West. festival here in Atlanta Georgia at the East Cobb Complex on CBS Sports Network Welcome into the 12U Perfect Game Select Festival at the East Cobb Complex in Marietta, Georgia. East versus West on a beautiful afternoon. I'm Danny Wexelman with Marlon Anderson. And Marlon, 32 of the very best players in North America, Venezuela and Puerto Rico represented here on the field. We're going to show you the lineup for the West team. They will be at the plate to Hi, start this Wilson. game. I'm from Puerto Ranch, California, and I'm an outfielder pitcher. Hi, my name is Jesus Romeda. I'm from Spring, Texas, and I play outfield for space. My name is Aaron Garcia. I'm from Pico Rivera, California. I play catcher and middle infield. My name is Trip Riley. I'm from Spring, Texas. I play third base. I'm a right-handed pitcher. Hi, my name is Braden Landry. I'm from Puyol, Washington, and I play shortstop. Hi, my name is Caleb Foster. I'm from Montgomery, Texas, and I play shortstop. Hi, my name is Luke Espo. I'm from Grapevine, Texas, and I play pitcher in first base. Hi, my name is Angel Gonzalez. I am from Los Angeles, California. I play center field and pitch. Hi, my name is Lucas Smith. I'm from McKinney, Texas, and I play catcher in first base. Hi, my name is Hudson Brown. I'm from Milo, Texas. I play first base and right field. What's up, guys? I'm Adrian Viola, Tucson, Arizona, and I play outfield and pitcher. Hi, my name is Logan Pasquarella. I'm from Corona, California, and I'm a pitcher in first base. Hi, my name is Caleb Alexander. I'm from Houston, Texas, and I play shortstop and pitch. Hola, mi nombre es Pablo Martínez, vengo de Puerto Rico, juego pitcher y outfield. Hi, my name is Sammy Garcia from Chandler, Arizona, and I play shortstop, second, outfield, and pitcher. Hi, my name is Richard Avina. I'm from Woodyard, California. I'm a catcher, pitcher, middle infielder, and outfielder. All right, there's your lineup you can see for the West team. Pretty cool to see those guys introduce themselves. That that all around the country, as we said, every corner, the best 12 U players, at least for the West team. That's the first eight in the lineup. And here's the second eight, 16 batters representing the West team. Check out those fresh uniforms they got. They saw those uniforms last night after our banquet. Those were revealed to them. Marlon, pretty cool, yeah? Oh, absolutely. I think getting the chance to come out here and put these uniforms on, play in front of the TV, but again, the parents are here supporting them, and it's a great day for them in baseball. This is JL Santos. He'll be on the mound for East, starting off out of Patterson, New Jersey. And self-scouting report on JL. He shared that he's got a good fastball, good spin on his curveball and changeup. Can also throw his off speeds for a strike. And Marlon, at 12 years old, that sounds pretty impressive. <laughs> it, it does. The self-evaluation, I think, is great for baseball. It's great for these kids. And it it get, makes them say who they are, and I think speaking that out loud does a lot. Uh, you know, this week, I think 12U, I'm just looking to see if the miles per hour goes up a little bit and if that's going to make it a little tougher for the hitters. 
Yeah, I would say that there's a lot of adrenaline going when you see the first pitch come in. These guys have been waiting all weekend long for their turn to take the field. You were here last weekend for the 11U Select Festival, and now these guys get to come in. It's a packed day. It's a packed house at the East Cobb Complex. Angel Gonzalez leading off for the West. Yeah, and what's great about this, you got Angel leading off. He's five foot. You got guys out there that's pitching that's closer to six foot tall. You know, it, it's a variation of, uh, of things that happen at, at 12 years old. But again, they're they're all good at what they do, and they love the game of baseball. And it's fun to watch them to compete on this level. And he takes a strike from Santos, Gonzalez, out of East LA, California. Mom, Janisha, Dad, Jose. Shared he's the oldest of four. And I think what's awesome about these games is that you got a lot of family members, as you mentioned, Marlon, in the stands to see these young guys come out here as Santos starts this game off with a strikeout. To see them play, to support them. They got a round of applause at the banquet last night. I mean, the sacrifices these parents make is amazing. Absolutely. I mean, the kids love it. They get to play the game they love, but the parents get to travel around and make all the plans for all these events. So, you know, kudos goes to the parents for all their hard work and dedication to this. Drew Wilson steps in, batting second for the West out of Porter Ranch, California. His parents, Ina and Damian. This is also, you know, it's, it's tough for players. You know, you're playing against players you haven't played against before, but everybody is good here. You know, pitchers are good, hitters are good. It's like being able to slow down and kind of, you know, let the atmosphere with the cameras out and all the people kind of fade away so you can get out there and play baseball. Hopefully that happens quickly for everybody so you can see a good game. Yeah, they've been waiting for this one. They get the call that they're selected as Wilson fouls that pitch back. They get the call, they're selected, and then they know what's coming for them now because of Perfect Game. The media that we see all over our website, all over Perfect Game TV, you get the chance to kind of get a glimpse into what these games are like, how special they are for these young men. And I think what's really cool too, Marlon, is that they've grown up watching the guys above them, the generations above them, the guys who are going to be drafted. We talked about their draft One, class, two. 2026, 2027. Yeah. That's not that far away from <laughs> these guys, is it? No, time flies. <laughs> and again, you, I've, I've noticed something already from last week. You see more all-speed pitches this week, especially early in the count. Uh, he came out and kind of went right out with the first guy, got some good heat, but he's kind of mixing it up. And they have their one in the pitch, and they got to show all their, 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 their uh, tools. Yeah, he comes back with the heater, so back-to-back -back strikeouts for J.L. Santos. Yeah, he, he is definitely, you know, max effort there. He's lost his hat probably about four or five times so far, <laughs> I've, I've seen. But, again, his max effort is trying to give everything he has, and this is his time, uh, his one inning on the mound, and he's putting everything into it. He's going to face Lucas Smith, who comes up for West, takes strike one. Yeah, I think, you know, it's awesome. So these kids have so much style. They come in, they get all this cool PG gear, the hats. I mean, they look so fresh in these uniforms, but they, they have a little bit of themselves, too. And, and man, do these guys have a lot of flow, Marlon, let me tell you. Well, last week I le learned that the term is drip. <laughs> they have yeah. a little drip and you know yeah. so whatever that means for us for what we're taking it today but no they, they, they do I, you have to add your own personality to baseball you know they're coming up in a generation to where they can start doing that at such a young age and by the time they get to you know high school and college and hopefully some of them One, professional baseball One, and, and some of them even in the big leagues they are learned to like express themselves personally in, in the right way so and there's another swing and a strikeout for Jail Santos on the mound, strikes out the side in his inning performance, Marlon. So impressive by Santos, what he's able to do here for the East team. Coming up, we will see the West team in the field. The East team will get to bat. Welcome back. We're scoreless in the bottom of the first at the 12U Perfect Game Select Festival. So we just had an opportunity to see the West team at the plate. Now we're going to get a chance to see the East team. Hi, my name is Gerald Santos. I'm from Patterson, New Jersey. I play first, third, and I also pitch. My name is Julian Martinez. I play catch in the field, and I'm from New York, New York. Hi, my name is Yomar Infante. I'm from Windermere, Florida, and I'm a right-handed pitcher. Hi, my name is Flip Waters. 
I play center field and pitch, and I'm from Rochester Hills, Michigan. What's up, guys? My name is Anthony Valillo. I'm a shortstop, second baseman, and I'm from Elkridge, Maryland. Hi, my name is Caden Scott. I'm from Princeton, North Carolina. My positions are the corner infield and right hand pitcher. Hello, my name is Trenton Motley. I'm from Huntersville, North Carolina. I play center field, right field, and I pitch. Hi, my name is Ethan Stewart. I'm from Winterville, North Carolina, and I play first base pitcher in the right field. Hey, my name is Robbie Masia. I'm from Comac, New York. I catch and play third base. Hi, my name is Dexter McLeon, Jr. I'm from Suwannee, Georgia. I'm an outfielder and a right handed pitcher. Hi, my name is Carter Moon. I'm from Bogart, Georgia. I play middle infielder pitcher in center field. Hi, my name is Hunter Elmore. I'm from Mount Valley, Alabama, and I play first and third base. Hi, my name is Jerry Rivera. I'm from Sanford, Florida, and I play second and outfield. What's up? My name is Caden Borcherding. I'm a catcher, first base, second, and I'm from Dunn, Georgia. Hi, my name is Chase Gockenbach. My hometown is Danvers, Tennessee. I play third, pitch, and catch. Hola, me llamo Camilo Gutierrez. Soy de Venezuela, estado Barcelona. Y soy outfielder de Venezuela. All right, so there's your lineup for the East. Check it out, Carter Moon is going to be the leadoff guy. And not only that, he's really a leader, I think, for this age group. This is a, a young man who these guys seem to have an affinity for. They follow him. I, I, he's just such a great leader. Uh, so this is going to be your first eight, and then we've got your second eight. Again, as we mentioned, 16 guys in both of these lineups. And that's Carter Moon, who's going to step in first. He's going to face... Luke Esquivel. Esquivel, well, familiar with the Esquivel family, Marlon, because his brother Lolly played at the 12U Select Festival two years ago. Pretty special for the Esquivel family. Oh, absolutely. I think it's great to have a, your brother lead, lead the way for you, show you how to go about and doing it. Um, but I, I love this leadoff here to Carter Moon. For me, the best thing about him is his nickname. It's Bubba. <laughs> you get Bubba out there playing, ready to go. I'm, I, I have, being from the South myself, I. I have an affinity for the name Bubba, and you know, he sticks out early in the competition for me. He got Bubba from his family, but some of his friends call him that too. A big swing from him and that pitch from Esquivel. He was here last year at the 11 U Select Festival as well. His parents, Kevin and Jincy, are familiar. He was the 11U Perfect Game Player of the Year as well, Carter Moon. I'll tell you, these pitchers are definitely going to be ahead of the curve today. Uh, guys are coming out there, really throwing the ball hard, got good stuff, and, you know, really intense. It, it's a little bit different. Last week, guys were getting the barrel on it early. This week, it seems like the pitchers may kind of stand out a little bit more. Again, that extra year on the same field, the same mound, you kind of get a little bit more experience and confidence in. That one just over Moon's head. And the count is full to the leadoff man for the East. She stays alive in the box, chops that one foul. You know he'd like to get a hit first team, get someone on the bases, get something going. That's the kind of guy, again, this is who Carter Moon is. He's, he's a pretty special player. And he works the leadoff walk for East to head over and take first base. And great at bat. He had a tough lefty on the mound. The guy threw him off pretty hard. Thought him, had him down 0-2. Thought he got a good pitch on the 0-2 count to strike him out. Didn't. And he was able to kind of work himself back into the count, work the walk for his team. And again, games like this, momentum is big. You know, the first person to get on the scoreboard kind of has that advantage. And, you know, getting on early in the game for your team is, is huge for Carter. That's going to bring up Colton Waters, Flip Waters, Marlon. That's his nickname. And I asked him this morning, where'd you get that nickname? He said, I used to flip off of the couches in my living room <laughs> as a kid. <laughs> the stories from the kids is, is some of the best part about this whole thing. Luke Esquivel, we mentioned his brother, Lolly. Well, his dad, also Lolly, played baseball at Miami 1997 to 2000. He was an All-American and won the 1999 College World Series. But mom, too. Mom played softball at Blinn Junior College. <laughs> Athletic family for the Esquivels. Absolutely. I think that's a lot of that going on on this field today. You, you know, athletes tend to keep their kids in, in sports like this, especially if it's their, their sport, which is always easy to do for them. Flip Waters from Rochester Hills, Michigan. Two, one. 
still growing into his size. We mentioned it. There's such a variety. Quick check over of Moon at first. Pascarella wanted it. Got the tag on, but Moon is safe. That's a quick step move. That's a tough move at, at every, every level. Uh, again, these kids are advanced. They, they play so much baseball, and they train with people who know this game, and they get a lot of work on those little things that make you a better pitcher or a better player when you're at the plate. Check out these kids watching the game. They are all around this field. They've got balls in their hands, getting some autographs from these guys. The future of the game. It's beautiful. Moon takes off. <laughs> and that pitch is just ripped foul off Waters' bat. And, and what's great about the kids around watching, you know, you got a lot of kids around playing and whatever. They they see the older kids. They see the cameras. They see the every the, the home run derby and everything that's going on. And it motivates them. Oh, yeah. You know, every kid won't want to be on this field when they get to this age. And, you know, you have to play well in the events that you have. But it just motivates you. And, you know, I tell people, baseball is not going anywhere. There's so many fans that are being built in, in, in places like this. And Perfect Game is doing a great job. Waters takes a hack and stays alive. And that's so true. You get to see every generation of player come out here. I mean, I'm seeing little kids on these fields all around the East Cobb Complex who you know are paying attention to our field. Well, I think that's the genius of having it right here in the middle of this complex. I think that's smart because you get to continue to build a generation. You get to continue to build a hope. The parents see it. The parents see what is possible. You know, they continue to support because I think it's good for the, the boards to see it, but I think it also for the families to help them to continue to be a part of this because there's a lot of sacrifice. That, that ball just pops away from Aaron Garcia, so Moon takes second. And, and I can see one, one of the things I talked about early, being able to relax and let your true skills come out. Good reaction there. He had a good secondary lead off the back like he should have been. And once that ball hit the ground and got away from him, he took off and got into second base easily. Moon's got speed. That's something we know about his game. Waters shared with us that he always puts up a battle at the plate. He hits that ball on the ground to Foster, who makes the play over at first. And Moon will advance over to third base. And, and what I love about this is baseball. Again, ball gets away, good base running, gets to second base. Hitter with two strikes facing the tough left, and he's able to pull that ball to the right side, move the run to third base. Now they have an opportunity to score a run without getting a hit. Sacrifice fly, anything uh, in, on the ground to the right side, in the middle of the infield, everybody's back. This makes it, this is about what baseball is about, is passing it and sacrificing for your team to make the game easier for everybody. One down, Dexter McLeon Jr. steps in. I would say he's got height over every other kid here at this event. He's, he's already got those long limbs he shared that he's trying to figure them out right now, the growth that he's had at just 12 years old. No, absolutely. I was able to talk to his mom last night, and he's a kid that he's an Alabama guy that was able, like I am, and he was able to actually, I think the family moved over to Swanee not long ago. He's able to, he's playing with Todd Green, which is former big leaguer playing on that team and helping him to advance, but his family was willing to move here to allow him the opportunity to get around better baseball and grow into himself, but, you know, the, the sacrifice that the parents are making, the families are making them to put this stuff together, so. Look at his teammates watching his at bat. Dexter also part of the 11U Perfect Game Select Festival last year. And you might recognize his name, his dad. Played football and baseball at Clemson, drafted by the Rams, played 11 years, Marlin, in the NFL. Also drafted by the Twins out of high school. Mom as well, though, played college basketball. Now she's a high school girls basketball coach. So the, the athletic genes, you really can see them on the field just by looking at Dexter. Yeah, and she's coaching at one of the premier high school athletic uh, schools in the state of Georgia, Buford High School. So. Again, it's been, it's, it, this is what baseball is about. Like, kids that are able to play, they have the background, they have the ability, and teaching them how to play the game in the right way at a young age. A full count to McLeon. Esquivel working on the mound. That pitch, a bullet, but foul. Carter Moon still over at third base. Yeah, he's, he's a big kid. You know, he's, he's definitely, he is, he's, got right? a, he's got a frame to grow into that can be special. Uh, down the line. Yeah, he wanted me to share too. He said, make sure you tell everybody I run a 6760. And that one looks like it might have clipped him. So he's going to head over and take first base. You're going to have runners on the corners for the East team. Yeah, that ball kind of cut inside on him. Uh, 
right off the top of the knee. That's going to hopefully not, pitcher, not eight, be terrible Central. later on. It's going to have a little pain in. Hopefully it doesn't swell up anything and cause him to not be able to finish the game. So. But again, he's, you know, the pitcher's out there, he's working. He's, he, these are some of the best hitters that he's ever faced back to back to back. When you're in an all-star game like this, everybody can play. There's Every no hitter relief. can hit. There's no relief. And, and, and that's good at this age. I think being able to slow the game down and learn how to succeed in situations like this is what helps you to be able to advance as you move forward. That's going to bring up JL Santos. We saw him on the mound in the top of the frame pitching for the East team out of Patterson, New Jersey. I told you what he could do on the mound at the plate. He's got good speed for his size, good glove as well. He can hit everywhere on the field. As he rips that ball right past third, but called foul. Foul ball. I, I got a perfect look right down the line there. Foul ball for sure. But what's so great about that, again, as a base runner, you have to make sure you're outside of the baseline. That's one of the things that, yeah. If you, as you look, you know, he's right on the baseline. You, as a runner, you want to make sure you're outside of the baseline. So if the ball hits you, you're That's not right. out. If you're in the field of play and that ball hits you, you're out. And you want to be back so those big right-handed hitters don't turn on you and you can't see the ball. So. Santos already has the bat speed. I think a lot of people had him pegged as the home run winner. And that one, he'll wear that pitch as well. So the bases will be loaded. He's going to head on down to first. He seems to be okay and marlon we see this now again we talk about nine. the adrenaline the excitement yes. they're 12 years old yes. and sometimes these things happen and uh, again you're not used to failure these are the top players so everywhere they play when they're at home or wherever they're the best players and they're able to do everything they want to do when you're playing against your competition and you see things start to get out of character for you how are you going to react and you know last week we were able to see some guys react in positive ways after negative things happen and i think for me he's gonna have to make an adjustment right here to get out of this inning Jared Rivera will step in with the bases loaded. Just one down for the East team. Do you feel, Marlon, maybe sometimes they're trying a little too hard? They want to impress a little too oh much? Oh, absolutely. You know, and you start off just competing until a little something goes wrong. And, I, again, over, the, over time, they'll get better at doing this. This is one of the, you know, some of the guys were here last year, some were not. So some of them, it's the first time that they're having a situation like this. And none of them are used to failing because if they were used to failing, they wouldn't be here in, in, in this elite event you know, being out on the field and doing the things that they do. So. Jared Rivera out of Sanford, Florida. It goes by Peanut, Peanut Rivera, so we'll call him that. His parents, Jessica and Freddie. He shared that the Red Sox, his favorite team. Favorite player, though, Javi Baez. He said he's quick on his feet. That's a quality I know a lot of these young men seem to really love. And there's a strike from Esquivel, a throw down from Aaron Garcia. Quick check on Carter Moon at third. Yeah, and, and that's uh, another thing that I noticed last week. The, the team that they love and the player that they identify with is not the same Never always. The same. It, back in the day, if you, you <laughs> followed your team and you were going to find a player on that team that you loved and you were emulated, but that's not the case these days, which, again, the adjustments that they have more TV, more opportunities to watch more games in different markets, and, you know, it's, it's causing that in players, but I think it's great because now you can find somebody that you can really identify with and see yourself in. Which I'm so glad for. I'm so glad that there are more players at that level being marketed in the right way and being able to show their personalities in the right way. That's a bullet off the bat of Rivera, but foul. By the way, our umpires for this game, home plate umpire Colton Black, first base Michael Waller, second base Derek Stevenson, and third base umpire Jim Combs Stakes. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad they have the opportunity to find a player that they can more closely identify with because the game has grown so much. Another foul ball off Rivera. He's gonna walk this one off. Marlon, you know a thing or two about fouling a pitch off your leg? Yeah, it happens. <laughs> it, 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 and that's the thing he's got his shin guard on the front foot but with the lefty that's coming in like that cutting the ball he actually hits the ball off his front off of his back knee which is tough to oh, do yeah. uh but but again like you're facing pitchers that are elite and that are good and you know he's in trouble right now bases <laughs> loaded one out but he makes one pitch and he can get out of this inning with nothing or this good hitter can hit him in the gap and have three runs on the board so that's the intensity about a game like this in an all-star event Rivera is the cleanup hitter for the East team. He's got the bases loaded, just one down in the bottom of the first with a 2-2 count. And, and we ran into this last week, too. It's a tall pitcher on the mound, and he's 
you know, he's really stepping so far out there that he's coming kind of off the lip of the of the mound, and it's kind of throwing him off balance a little bit. He's complained a little bit and I think said something to the dugout, but when you have t tall players like this on that mound, then you get either you can't go far as far as you want to get out there, or you have to shorten your step, and it, con uh, it affects your control. So a big spot here with a full count, and Rivera takes a ball in. So Carter Moon will come home to score. The East team goes up one now to nothing. Number 13, Hunter Elmore. If you watch him uh, here, if, you, if we can get the, I feel like he's trying to shorten up his, his stance a little bit because he can't extend out with his left leg, which is causing his arm to be a little bit off balance. Okay. So now you're gonna see Preston Wilson come out. He is the manager for this West team. And let me tell you, getting to talk to Preston the past couple of days, the passion that he has for kids at this age group. He, he shared with me, Marlon, he said, I'm just here to help be a chisel. I'm, I'm here to share the knowledge that I have. There's no gatekeeping. And I'm so excited to be able to work with the future of the game. You can see there uh, the outfielder, the incredible numbers that he's put up throughout his time playing in the big leagues. The first round pick for the Mets in 1992. And there's Luke Collier. Luke Collier, an eight year career in the big leagues. Marlon, his son Cam just drafted to the Reds in the first round of this year's draft. I know he's so proud, uh, but he, he is so special to perfect game and, and to the growth of, the, of this game in general. Well, it's, it's always now, great as a kid H to be able to be coached and Elmore. be around former big leaguers. Uh, it, it's something that's special for kids. I think it motivates them to hear the stories and know where their coaches have been and some of the things they have done. So that's what you like to see. Your coach comes out, gives you a little pep talk, maybe calms you down a little bit. You come back with a strike. This is Hunter Elmore who will step in from Moundville, Alabama. Another one of Alabama guys, Marlon. He'll come up with the bases loaded and one out in the bottom of the first. He, he, he will. He you know, got a chance to talk to his parents last night. And again, they do a lot of driving back and forth, the perfect game. But they understand, like, giving him the opportunity to play at this top level will help him in the future. And I think, you know, again, the sacrifice of the parents and the things that they do to allow these kids to play. A big pitch from Esquivel for a strike, a one-two count. So he's ahead in the count. That, that's, his, I think, his first batter, Marlon, in this half. He's been able to work ahead. Yeah, and, and again, it's it's the little things you do. You know, A lot of times you can get away with it playing when you're not playing in a tournament like this. You have to throw strikes. He went right at him that time again. You know, and that's what I love. You know, you talk about Preston going out there and talking to him. Uh, if, you, if you watch the pitch, what he's been able to do since Preston went out there is throw the ball in the zone. You can get strikes and swings when you throw the ball in the zone. If it's not in the zone, you're not going to get guys to swing. But don't allow, as a coach, don't allow God to have an excuse. Oh. That ball is tagged from Julian Martinez. And it's gone. Julian Martinez clears the bases for the East team. A grand slam off his bat. Yeah, celebrate with your teammates, young man. And that was turned around quickly. But again, once you're used to getting in trouble, you get, you know, he, he threw his fastball in the zone, bases loaded. He's, he's throwing a lot of pitches, so it's probably not his best pitches. But that swing was on time. <laughs> he knew the fastball was coming. He saw guys hitting the ball off of their feet inside or whatever. He was going to get the barrel to the ball, and he got it quickly around. Marlon, I blinked, and that ball was gone. <laughs> it was. And, and it, it, these, these kids are special. That's going to bring up Ethan Stewart. The East team leads five to nothing. And there is Mr. Martinez. Catch your breath. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he, he, was, he was scooting around the bases, too. He was happy. Again, like this is all about teamwork and playing with you guys and getting that early lead like this now can help your team relax and whoever's going on the mound for you next inning, hopefully they have a, a little easier time getting out there and getting situated. Back-to-back -back weekends here for the select festivals with a grand slam. And Esquivel does get out of it. He'll head back to the dugout, but the East team off Julian Martinez's bat go up 5-0. We head to the second.
Perfect Game Select Festival on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Perfect Game, the largest and most respected independent scouting service in baseball. By Oakley. Be who you are. By G4, the most comfortable protective guards in all of baseball. Because the best never settle for less. G4, go next level. And by Rawlings, the number one glove of pro players. Rawlings, the official baseball glove of Major League Baseball. Welcome back to the East Cup Complex in Marietta, Georgia. The 12 U Select Festival, perfect games select festival here in Atlanta, back-to-back -back weekends, and this is Chase Gockenbach from Dandridge, Tennessee. He'll be on the mound for the East team. They took a 5-0 lead in the bottom of the first. On the mound, you can expect to see from Chase good command of all pitches. He's got a four-seam fastball, 12-6 curve, a slider, and a cutter. Marlon shares that he's versatile on the mound, and we'll get a chance to see that now in the second inning with the West team Coming up, Luis Olmeda will lead off for the West. And, and again, these, I feel like the, <clears throat> the pitchers this week, they look a little bit in warm-up, even in warm-up. Ball's coming out of him really well, and they have movement. To, to, to say you have a cutter and a, <laughs> a sinker at this age or whatever, you know, again, you've gotten a lot of training, you're getting the coaching you need, and, and people are helping you to be able to simplify your game. Comes up with... A first pitch curveball. A first pitch curveball <laughs> for a strike. Olmeda out of Houston, Texas. His parents, Roberto and Dana. Dodgers fan in Texas. I like to hear that. He likes to watch Verdugo, Alex Verdugo. Favorite Dodgers player, though, is Cody Bellinger. Pretty special to come out here in your only inning of work, Marlon, and, and you're throwing your secondaries. And then he comes back. It's another strike. He gets a strike out of Olmeda. Absolutely. The, 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 conf the confidence wow, to, 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 to pitch. And, and I think that's that's goes back to the training that they're getting. Talking to coaches and being under control. It used to be a guy through a curveball. It was trying to be nasty, bouncing in the dirt, trying to get a chase. Now younger kids are throwing that get over to get that strike ahead and hopefully put pressure on the hitter to have to react now to the rest of his pitches. So it's 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 fascinating watching this level of baseball with, with kids that are this young. By the way, that was Ethan Stewart warming up for the East team. But this is Hudson Brown. Brown steps in to face Gockenbach and takes another strike. I mean, you know, a tale of so many different stories with these young men on the mound. Gockenbach working quickly, being able to land that big curveball that he does have. And, and again, you see a lot of fast, I mean, a lot of foul balls so far early to the opposite side, uh, like going over the dugouts or whatever. Again, these are the first, probably some of the best pitchers that any of these guys have faced. <laughs> On a consistent basis, back to back in, another strike out there. Back to back Ks for Chase Gockenbach. <laughs> And again, when you can make your pitches like that, you can throw the fastball hard and you can come back and lay that curveball in there like that. Again, these, this is elite pitching at this age. The East team has five straight strikeouts. Their pitching's been on point. This is going to bring up Luke Esquivel. We just saw him on the mound for the West team. We mentioned his dad, the accomplishments that he had at Miami. His brother, Lolly, who was a part of the 12U Select Festival. Now, Luke, who's trying to make a name for himself and I'm sure he is. There's some autographs. These guys are signing baseballs for the fans. There's JL Santos, Marlon. Oh man, I love to see that. Well, this is an experience that's so unique for kids this age and being able to come out here and, and, and shine, but also present yourself as one of the top 12 year olds in the country. I, I think that's an excellent thing to do. It builds your confidence and allows you an opportunity to do something that is so different from your everyday routine as a 12-year-old. 
Yeah, and then they're going to go back to school and be heroes. It's going to be pretty <laughs> cool, I'm sure. That ball's chopped on the ground, gets through the right side. So a base hit for Luke Esquivel. Breaks up the strikeout chain. Gets his team on the bases, Marlon. It did. They didn't try to do too much there. Um, Gox, Gox been moving the ball around. Good good effort there at second base. Oakley's flying off, but couldn't quite get there. But uh, again, like not trying to do too much. He's He's been, you know, the... the they, they've had good pitching so far, and he didn't try to do too much. Ball got there. He just dropped the head on it, trying to pull it in the hole, and was successful. That'll bring up Caleb Foster. Two down in the top of the second. Foster from Montgomery, Texas. By the way, for Esquivel, Otani, one of his favorite players, two-way guy, and Foster rips that ball down the right field line all the way back to the fence. Esquivel is going to hold up at third base, but a two-out double for Caleb Foster. And, and again, I think, you know, what's great about this, guys are learning from each other. Uh, pitcher, pitcher's been pretty good. He's throwing the ball pretty hard. When he throws his off feet pitch, it's not really great zone. He didn't try to do it too much. He shot the ball on the right field line. It was a fastball that was up and out over the, out over the plate, and right field was able to get the ball and get it in quick, so the runner was not able to score from our first base. But again, you have to make adjustments in baseball and watching what happens before you and the, what the pitcher is doing. That's how guys get better at their game. Two on and two down. That's going to bring up Adrian Viella. Viella out of Tucson, Arizona. His parents, David and Myra. These games, too, Marlon, it's a point of pride. The score at the end of the day, does it matter? I mean, it matters to these guys because they want to say they won. Absolutely. But really, it's just a great chance to show off your skills, right? Play with your friends. There's Preston Wilson. But you know that the West team is feeling some kind of way right now. They want to come back and get on the board. They, they do. And, and even last night, I think when you practice and you take batting practice and you get out here amongst guys, the East, they weren't even confident enough to say that they thought they would win last <laughs> night. It was the West that was kind of, you know, not necessarily talking smack, but was very confident for the East to get this big lead like this and to get on top. Now that talk from last night is obsolete. You know, you have to play the game. You have to get on the, on the and I think it's a lot to be learned from that. You know, it's not about being cocky. It's just confident about your ability to play the game and your ability to compete. Like you said, it's about competing out there. So bases loaded, two down. Caleb Alexander steps in. Viella worked the walk, a two-out walk. Good patience by him to head over to first base. Alexander, the son of Corey and Tia, another 11U Perfect Games Select Fest participant last year. Could we see two Grand Slams in one game? Is that possible, Marlon? Well, I saw it. one team score a lot of runs in <laughs> and go up a lot last inning, and then I saw eight inning, uh, eight inning, uh, eight runs, seven, six inning to come back to tie the game before the last inning last week. So I believe there's a possibility to see absolutely anything out here. We saw that home run derby uh, right before the game. Aaron Garcia won that. He plays for the West team. He's been behind the plate already in this one. We'll see him bat in a little bit. Is that curveball? Yes, it is. And, and it's, it's a 2 0 curveball. Well, 2 1 curveball. But, you know, again, like, this is about competition. These are the best players in the country for a reason. And, you know, guys are not going to give in to any situation. Alexander rips that ball through the infield. West is on the board. One run will score. Two runs will score. Coaches send them all home. A bases clearing double for Caleb Alexander with two outs. The West team trails by two. And, and this is the adversity that happens in a game like this. You know, you get a pitcher, you get two quick outs, and then a guy barely gets a ball through the infield on the base hit, the next guy hits the double. But if you watch this, you threw that curveball two times, and the third time you threw it up there, that guy got the barrel <laughs> to it easily. And, and for me, that's what it's about. It's about making adjustments, and it's about understanding and, and knowing that you are playing against some of the best players in the country. 
a huge hit for Caleb Alexander to get his team on the board in the top of the second. That's going to bring up Logan Pascarella out of Corona, California. Pascarella lifts this ball in the air into deep center field, all the way back at the fence. Making the play is Trendon Motley in left field. What a play. Great play at the wall. Battling those shadows as well. Hopefully he's okay. Watch this one more time, Marlon. Watch the athleticism, how far he had to go. Watch this. Great job by him. West gets on the board. We head to the second. Welcome back. PG Care's mission is to inspire and support underserved children within at-risk communities by using sports to educate, provide guidance, and mentorship. Both teams on the field today participated in fundraising. Over $35,000 will be donated. The top individual fundraisers were Drew Wilson, Ethan Stewart, and Adrian Viella. Huge shout out to these three and all the young men who participated. You also can contribute to PG Cares. Just text 12U select to 71777. Welcome back to the 12U Perfect Game Select Festival. I'm Danny Wexelman with Marlon Anderson. The West team got on the board, Marlon Anderson, but right before that inning ended, you saw a play, Trendon Motley going back at the wall to make the catch, battling the shadows. No, absolutely not. I think you can any youngsters out there as you watch what he did he did some things right and did some things wrong he was great at trying to feel for the wall to make sure he didn't hit it uh with the ball being that high up in the air i would like to see him to get back to the fence with that left hand put it on the wall and then make the adjustment to catching the ball he made a great play uh by being able to catch that ball again going into the shadows trying to use the fence trying to find the fence but bottom line he was able to catch the ball and get his team out of a big inning right there all right, coming in to pitch, Adrian Viella. He'll be on the mound for the West team. Robert Masia will lead off for the East. Rocket number 99, of course, I asked him for Aaron Judge. He said yes, absolutely. He's been behind the plate for this East team from Comac, New York. Not, not a bad guy to kind of want to emulate and try to, you know, look at it as a, as a role model at this day and time. The guy's going to cost the Yankees or somebody a whole lot of money next year. <laughs> yes, he is. And again, the competition out here, the guys that are competing against each other, two quick outs mean nothing. What part of the lineup you're in, it means nothing because all these guys can hit and really play the game really well. There's no relief just because it's the bottom of the lineup. <laughs> Masia, the son of Robert and Lori. He said he loves to hit. By the way, <laughs> look at the puka shells. Puka shells are back, my friends. He <laughs> said he loves to hit. Hitting is my strength, but I also enjoy catching, being the captain of the field. I can control the running game with my arm as well. Oh. He's going to work a leadoff walk, head over to first base in the bottom of the second. That's a close pitch there. Nice, nice pitch coming out of his hand again. Love hearing the popping of the mitt from the catcher. You know, these guys are 12 years old, but the ball's coming out well. And again, just uh, uh, the competition level and going at guys, and all of them are look to be th their, their size <laughs> is something that's special too at 12 years old. And this is Yomar Infante. He takes a strike from Viela Infante, the son of Omar Infante. We got to see his family at the banquet last night. Yeah, running across him out of the blue is great. How you know, special was that? Again, a great big leaguer, played for a long time, but just a guy who knew how to play the game. So to have a kid like this, I promise you that his son, with the nickname Yomi, is going to be very <laughs> fundamentally sound, knowing Omar. Two one. 
We saw Viella at the plate again. He's from Tucson, has a quick check over of Masia first. And that young man's got some autographs already. Who got the sweet spot? That's what I want to know. Who stole the sweet spot, Marlon? Hopefully nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving that spot for the manager at some point. I hope so. That ball is ripped off Infante's bat all the way out to the track in center field. Masia slides in safely at third. And Yomar Infante with a very loud double. It, 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 Again, you know, size doesn't matter in this game. You know, you, you make an adjustment off what the pitcher's doing. He's trying to throw the ball outside, leak back to the middle of the plate, and he just stayed through the ball really well. Shot it to the fence. You see the center fielder pick up the ball. If he throws that ball to second base, possibility of even having to play at second or maybe keeping the runner at first base. Uh, those are one of those, some of those little things that in games like this can really matter later on. So the East team in the bottom of the second, two on, no outs. Anthony Badillo steps in out of Elk Ridge, Maryland. His parents, Yamina and Jonathan. That ball just gets away from Lucas Smith, but Masio will stay put at third. Rico Billups the third base coach for the East team. As you see that pass ball there, you know, ball didn't kick far enough to get there. But if you watch the pitcher, he spiked that ball. He's been pretty good. He's been hitting his spots. Get a couple guys on, get a big hit. It kind of takes a, a pitcher out of his rhythm. Again, these guys are used to being the best on the field and nobody really taking advantage of them. And this may be one of those situations to where like it's your first time kind of having some adversity facing guys that are equal to you. These are all-stars. Every person in this lineup can hit the ball well. Yes, they can. Badillo shared his dad, Jonathan, played baseball in Puerto Rico. And he's a Francisco Lindor fan. He said, I love the way he plays the game with passion and joy. There's Rico. Rico Billups, Kyle Blum, Luke Collier, the coaches for Team East. Badillo chops this ball back to Viella, who goes one. The runners will stay. And they get an out in the bottom of the second for the West team. Great reaction there. If you watch a pitcher on this play, it's a show to replay. Defense is a big part of this. You know, you, you gave, gave up a couple hits, you had a walk, but you're athletic enough to catch the ball, check the runner, and then throw a strike to first base to get the out. Again, he didn't panic. He was able to do the little things and get that out. Now he's has a chance of being able to minimize the damage here. One down, two runners still on. Caden Borsherding will step in for his first bat at the 12U Perfect Game Select Festival. Borsherding out of McDonough, Georgia was a part of our 11U Perfect Game Select Festival last year. His parents, Jason and Jackie. His dad played football and baseball at Mount St. Joseph University. He was a 15-year assistant, five-year head high school baseball coach in the greater Atlanta area. Coach's son. We got a lot of those out here. Yes. And there you see Lucas Smith. He's going to have a, a quick chat with Adrian Viella, make sure they're on the same page. And, and I love the fact that it's not the coaches out there talking about it. He's thinking to himself, you know, hey, it's too old, big guy right here, maybe going to the next guy, maybe trying to get a double play instead of giving him a cookie right here, right down oh. the middle of the plate maybe. A 2-0 pitch to Borsherding. That one gets away from Smith. A short, short backstop, though. He can't find the ball. So Masi is going to come home and score. Let's see. Home plate umpire Colton Black raises his arms up. The disappearing ball trick, Marlon. Yeah, with, with the feel, with the padding, it hit perfectly and then went behind the padding of, of the behind home plate that protects the everything again one of those unfortunate things because because they're so close to the backstop guys probably not going to be able to score from third base but because it got caught behind that padding 
the yeah. automatic run uh, comes across the plate. Masia looked a little confused too, but he comes home to score the East lead six to three. Orcharding, green light, 3-0 swinging. You must have the green light in situations like this. <laughs> Everybody's trying to show what they have. And again, it, it's all about the players showing their best ability. Another good comeback pitch from Viela brings the count to full. And again, it's all about the reaction after adversity happens. You know, it, And he comes back and gets the strikeout of Borsherding. Two down for West. All right, this is our Gold Glove Defensive Play of the Game. Our Rawlings Gold Glove Defensive Play of the Game. Rawlings, the number one glove of pro players. Rawlings, the official baseball glove of Major League Baseball. Trendon Motley, you loved this play, Marlon. No, I, I did. I love the fact that he called it. Like I say, my only correction is don't drift to the wall, get back there, put that hand against it, and then control all your environment around you from that point. So, but great play by, by the left fielder for sure. Can we also spotlight the fact he's rocking 88? You don't see that very often, do you? <laughs> no, you don't. He chops this ball super high. Viella makes the play over at first base, but the ball just gets away. Motley hustling down the line, and Fonte comes home to score. The East take a 7-3 to three lead. So Motley able to extend the inning, hustles down to first Marlin and beats it out. He does. He beats it out. A great play by the pitcher here. Being able to gather himself, turn and throw. It was a bang-bang play, and the throw just got up the line a little bit, a little high, and the time of the runner was getting there at the same time. So unfortunately... The throw was a little bit high, but still a great play to be able to bounce off the mound like that and turn and throw a strike to first base. The East able to extend their lead in the bottom of the second with two down. Chase Gockenbach will step in. Gockenbach, the son of Anthony and Brooke. He said winning the Perfect Game World Series at 10U and being awarded the MV pitcher is one of my most memorable baseball events. We saw that curveball was pretty dangerous, Marlon. No, no, it is. You can see why he was successful in, in any tournament that he pitches in. Definitely got good stuff. Ball comes out of his hand very well. He chops this ball again. Viella fields it, makes the easy throw over to first. And so the West team will head back to the dugout. But the East extend their lead. They lead seven to three. We go to the third. The East team leads the West 7-3 in the top of the third. Welcome back to the 12U Perfect Game Select Festival, the beautiful and historic the the East Cobb Complex in Marietta, Georgia. Ethan Stewart will be on the mound for the East team out of Winterville, North Carolina. will get a chance to show off what he's got. Marlin for his team. They try to preserve the lead that they have, but the West team able to scratch a couple across last inning and get themselves on the board. Yes, they, they, they were. And, and for me, the, again, I go back to last night in the banquet and the confidence of the West side and the non-confidence in the East side. Uh, I think it's a lesson to be learned there for the East side is like never underestimate yourself or whatever. A little grand slam from, again, we say the bottom of the lineup, but in, in lineups like this, there's no such thing as a bottom of the lineup. It's guys that are going out there and competing and, you know, having a good time. Julian Martinez had that grand slam for his team. The West, though, able to get on the board, put three runs up in the second. Pablo Martinez steps in. I mentioned the, the 32 best players in North America, Venezuela and Martinez out of Puerto Rico. Now pitching for Team East, Ethan Stewart. His dad, Pablo, his mother, Julie Mar. He also has two brothers. His dad played baseball as an outfielder. He shared his uncle as well, a pitcher. His grandfather was a catcher. So he's got family all over the field helping him grow into the person that he is. Well, absolutely. When you're in Puerto Rico, everybody plays baseball as kids growing up. And you have family members all over the place. You know, it's a great thing about being able to have so many teammates from over there and being able to go over there every now and then. It's just a, uh, it's an island that loves baseball and just like everybody does here in America. 
And they are a part of America. Absolutely. <laughs> Ethan Stewart, Big E, his parents, Paul and Devin. His dad played junior college baseball. Drop third strike, Martinez heads over to first, good throw down. That's Borsharding behind the plate for the East team. Little rally monkey for the West. Is that an Anaheim Angels fan there? Somebody brought that home with them? <laughs> Gotta love the rally monkey. So one down. Braden Landry steps in for the West. Landry comes all the way to East Cobb Complex from Washington. His dad, Jay, mom, Tara. Dad played baseball, football, basketball in high school. He's also wearing a puka shell necklace. Take a little look at this beautiful piece. <laughs> it's back. It's back. I'm telling you guys, it's back. <laughs> I love it. I'm a fan. He chops that ball just foul down the line. The great thing about this, most of the pitchers here are playing other positions <laughs> or whatever, but you can see a guy who is a true pitcher. And for me, you know, he out on the mound now, he's a true lefty pitcher. He, he's a guy who he's under control. He's going both sides of the plate. He's throwing his off-speed pitch. He's a guy who knows he's taken some lessons and learned a few things about pitching in his days. Stewart is, you know, again, ball's coming out of his hand really well. He's only going to gain more velocity as he gets older, but being able to throw his off-speed pitches and having the confidence and the control of his body out there. And he's 5'10", 5'11", already, so... He shared with us, and one thing that would surprise us about him, Ethan Stewart, a couple of years ago, I considered playing less baseball, Marlon, so I could play more golf. But then I just decided to wait until I get older to play more golf. Seems like a good idea, huh? Give baseball a try a little longer. <laughs> it, it, they just, we just showed the, the side angle. We just had the side angle there. And if you can see, again, these guys are 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 in their step is a little bit further and it comes right to the edge of the pitching mound and, and it can throw you off balance a little bit and you know guys have had a little trouble so far but uh, this is because of the growth of these 12 year olds how, how big they are during Landry. a normal season yeah yeah go ahead no I just said during a normal season you're not going to see this many guys that are that tall that are on this field and pitching Landry works the one out walk that brings up Aaron Garcia the home run derby king for the 12 you select festival and good pitch from Stewart Garcia out of Pico Rivera California his dad Rudy his mom Maribel And another good pitch from Stewart for the strikeout. A little check down of Landry at first. Two down for the East. Now batting number 77, Trip Riley. Perfect. Nice release, nice volume. Again, lefty like that looks like it was a little hard to pick it up out of his hand. That swing was on a pitch that was up and out of the zone. Two down, that brings up Trip Riley. Riley out of Spring, oh. Texas. Oh. His dad, Brandon, mom, Sarah. He shared that being here at the Select Festival is a pretty big accomplishment. He remembers sitting at home watching the 11U Select Festival, Marlon, last year. He told his parents, I want to be there next year for 12U, and I'm going to work really hard to make that happen, and here I am. Well, those are the stories that you like to hear because, again, at this age, seeing kids your age be able to play on TV and do this stuff, it should inspire you to try to be a part of what's going on in baseball. And to actually accomplish that goal through the hard work, again, that's something that's great to be able to see and be able to talk about for the rest of his life. Stewart shared that 
He loves a good ribeye as that ball trickles away from Borsherding. So Landry takes second. Stewart loves a good ribeye, especially after playing a baseball game. He said any steakhouse will do. He's done a great job on the mound so far for his team. So I'm wondering if maybe he'll earn himself a nice steak dinner tonight. I don't know if that's a part of the post game meal or not, Marlon. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And there's another strikeout. The confidence from Borsherding to throw it back. Great job by Ethan Stewart. Big E to keep the game. The East team leads 7-3 as we go to the bottom of the third. Welcome back to our Perfect Game 12U Select Festival. The East Cop Complex in Marietta, Georgia. We've got a new pitcher on the mound for the West team. Logan Pascarella out of Corona, California. We get a chance to show off his stuff for the West. Marlon, you see this guy, you don't know a ton about him. I saw him during the media day that we do with these guys. They come up, they get to do a little dance. They tell us some favorite things about them. And he was kind of, he was uh, doing some tricks with the baseball. He seemed like a very confident young man. I'm excited to see him pitch. Well, watching him warm up from the left side, again, like he's a guy who is a true pitcher. Guys like a lefty like this, with, with, you know, you, you can see why the best pitchers are left-handed. And you know, that, that, that's something I'm noticing this week that I didn't notice last week, but lefty pitchers at this age, it makes it tough. And all these guys got pretty good velocity too. And they're not trying to do too much. It's naturally because of their size, I think. Caden Scott leads off for the East. Pascarella fires in ball one. He shared that one of the most memorable baseball events he's been to, PG National World Series, has said our team went undefeated. I got to play with my longtime teammates. And also PG Invitational, I had the opportunity to play with ZT National Prospects. And I was the pitcher for the championship game. We also went undefeated. It's fun when you go undefeated, I bet, huh? And, and that's the thing. It's the good, you know, baseball's life, the good and bad or whatever, and you win the game at the end, but it's the stuff that happens in the middle of that game that really kind of teaches you the lessons, I think. Caden Scott out of Princeton, North Carolina. Takes another ball outside. His parents, Michael and Lisa. It was nice and easy warming up. And looks like he's trying to add a little bit on his fastball right now as the inning has started. He gets that one on the outside part of the plate. The count is full. Three, two. And Scott rips a very long <laughs> foul ball. Pascarella is surely glad that one is out of play. The best on both sides, hitting and pitching. A big breaking ball misses, so Scott takes first base, a leadoff walk for the East team. The, the long foul ball got him a, uh, a walk right there. He came back with a 3-2 curveball instead of throwing the fastball again after he took a good, good hack on that fastball. Camilo Gutierrez will step in his first at bat for the East team swings through strike one from Pascarella. Camilo out of Barcelona, Venezuela. His parents, Johan and Yadinas. He played for Venezuela's national team at the 12U championship in Mexico. He shared he can hit, he's clutch, and considers himself a team player. One of my biz biggest strengths, I play to win. That's a great asset to have. I, and I, I do believe that not only at this level, but every level, being the best teammate and the best team player is the thing that will take you the furthest in baseball. An 0-2 pitch to Gutierrez, another big curveball. 
And that's a strikeout for Pascarella. Had a little delayed call by the umpire right there. That's something, that's something that no hitter likes, but it was a good pitch there, a good 0-2 pitch. Lefty-lefty curveball like this. Probably hadn't seen as many good curveballs like that. It was just on the outside part of the plate, and one of those pitches that you like to have back, but again, you got to figure out how to, how to put that bat on it. So that's going to bring up Carter Moon. He led off for the East team, the top of the order for these guys. He walked and came home to score in his first plate appearance. And the runner takes off for a second. The throw from Avina on the mark. Scott's out at second base. Great application of the tag by Foster. Richard Avina making the play. Two down for the West. That was a nice exchange by the catcher. I mean, he got rid of that ball really quick, put it right on the money down there at second base. That's the situation, getting good footwork, good movement, everything that you like to see in a young catcher. So now Carter Moon at the plate. The runners erased in the bottom of the third. Moon shared, he's good at hitting for contact. He's got speed, my fielding and pitching, also my strengths. We're gonna see him pitch a little bit later in this game. Big swing from him for strike two. Again, when you have a when you have a team like this, I guess everybody hits and plays the field, and a lot of these guys pitch, and you have so many left-handed pitchers, which also gives you a lot of left-handed hitters that are trying to face these left-handed pitches, which makes it tough. You know, at this age, you know, you you don't see a lot of you don't face a lot of left-handed pitching okay. usually uh, at, at this young age. But when you play an All-Star game again, and you're playing against the best. These left-handed pitchers are the tops around the country. A little bit of a different motion from Pascarella on that last pitch. A little Johnny Cueto-esque, Marlon, is what I got from him. Yes, it is. You can always tell the guys that watch a lot of TV and watch a lot of baseball sometime on TV, they emulate the things that they see. And again, is it helpful or, or did it get a hitter time to time and you don't know? Moon fouled that pitch back, stays alive. There you see it again. I don't know if I've ever seen that, but he gets the strikeout of Moon. And the West will head back to the dugout. The East team leads the seven to three. We head to the bottom of the third, the fourth. Uh, yeah, Lou, you got me? Yes, Awesome. Yes. All right, perfect. Hello, my friend. How are you doing? Good, good. Okay, 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 okay. Welcome back. The East team leads the West 7-3 in the top of the fourth. Here's our G-Form play the game. The most comfortable protective guards in all of baseball because the best never settle for less. G-Form go next level. Logan Pascarella. Marlon, have you ever seen a guy balance like that on the mound? Uh, you don't see too many guys that attempt that in a game. Uh, and, and again, it's all about throwing off timing for good hitters. And that's what he did that time. Had a good hitter. Guy was waiting on it, but he threw his timing off and was able to get the big strikeout. All right, we've got the head coach of the East team, Lou Collier, eight-year Major League vet joining us. Lou, thanks for giving us a few minutes. I know that this game is so special to you. You've had a chance to be around these young men all weekend long. What impresses you the most about these guys at the 12U level? Wow, it's, uh, first of all, it's an honor to be here. And uh, seeing these young men the last couple of days, 
lets me know that our game is in good hands because these, these young men can really play the game. Lou, uh, you, you, you get to watch batting practice every day, Lou, and, and people hit home runs and they do all that stuff or whatever. But what's been more impressive, the swings that you saw in batting practice or the arms of these pitchers and what they're doing uh, in, in the game against some of the top elite hitters? Yes, it's, it's been both, man. Uh, for these guys to be as, as young as they are, they have pretty good swings. Their fundamentals are sound as well as the pitching. The pitching is easy, uh, easy wind-ups and easy release with, with velocity, and, and they're throwing strikes. So, uh, man, these guys are playing at a high level. Well, well, physically, you know, again, like you see some guys that are five foot tall, you see some that are, you know, close to six foot tall, you, 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 they're moving around. But the athletic ability in their, them being in shape, that's something that I'm noticing myself is all of these guys are in shape, they have balance. The pitcher that had the delayed uh, pitching that last inning, they got the strikeout, that kind of thing shows like they're putting in work physically as well as on the field baseball wise. For sure, uh, that's what I noticed too, man, these guys, you can tell they love playing baseball, and they're serious about you know playing the game at the next level, and that's why I said our game is in good hands. If, if this if, if this is the future of our game, I'm excited about it. Absolutely. Lou, thank you for your time, my friend. Enjoy the rest of this game. No problem. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, Lou Collier, the head coach of the East team, along with Kyle Blum and Rico Billups, on the mound for the East. Caden Scott. He struck out Richard Avina, who led off for West. This is Sammy Garcia's first at bat for the West team in the top of the fourth. Garcia out of Chandler, Arizona. His parents, Gabriella and Samuel. That last pitch was a great pitch. 0-1 pitch there. Catcher dug way down inside there. He's able to kind of throw that sinker sinking in on his hands. And I, I, again, we got 80 miles an hour if you look top left of your screen. The velo hitting 80 for Caden Scott. Very impressive. Again, after sinking the ball down in on him, he reared back and let it go. And, and again, like th this is the top elite arms playing against some of the best hitters. And when you can make guys look like that at this level already, for me, that's really impressive. And Scott is bouncing around and around, very confident, which you love to see at this age as well. We go back to the top of West's order. Angel Gonzalez will step in with two down. Ten strikeouts the West team had through these first three and two-thirds innings. The East team has been dominant on the mound. And again, I'll go back to the banquet. East was not very confident last night, but maybe they didn't know how good their pitches were because these guys are dominating. Gonzalez rips that ball into shallow left, coming in to make the plays. Flip Waters. So a quick inning of work for Scott Caden. Who will head to the bottom of the fourth, the East. They still lead. Welcome back. This is a Perfect Games 12U Select Festival. These young men, the best 32 in North America. They're out here in Atlanta, Georgia, the East Cop Complex in Marietta. They've been here all weekend long. Now, the, finally, the opportunity they've got on the field. The East team leads by four, and Pablo Martinez will take them out for the West team out of Puerto Rico. He'll get a chance to show us what he's got for his team, trying to keep this game close. A lot of pride on the line, Marlon. No, absolutely is. I I'm impressed by the pitching so far, though. Uh, the guys are coming out. They're throwing the ball, they're being, being aggressive, throwing off-speed pitches, throwing their fastballs, and, and, and coming right at guys. And, you know, again, we've, we've had so many strikeouts so far. Uh, I like to count them up at the end of the day just to see how many strikeouts. It's not a lot of balls in play, and then the ones that are in, are in play, it's not a, balls, a lot of balls that have been hit hard throughout this game. So it's very impressive by the young pitching so far. I'm pretty sure I hear Edwin Diaz's walkout music from the bullpen, the closer for the New York Mets. So I'm sure that Mr. Martinez has to be fired up hearing this music as he gets to take them out. He's going to face Flip Waters. We saw him make that nice catch to end the top of the frame. He'll come up to bat. Grounded out to second base in his first A.B. of this game, and he'll lead off for the East.
Flip shared with us that his mom, Tammy, played D1 college softball at Michigan State University. And his oldest brother, Brenson, plays baseball. He also participated in PG's Junior Nationals Showcase. A lot of baseball in this family. Absolutely. See those lineup cards with all 16 guys on both sides getting in to hit. This is impressive. I, I'll tell you, the, the young arms that are going on, you one know, two, you, being able two. to put some of the best players on the field like this, again, like I, I just reiterate what, what Lou said, like the game's in good, good, in good place. Waters skies this ball on the left side of the field in foul territory, coming over to make that catch. Landry, nice job by him to cover a lot of ground and a lot of communication with these guys who have never played together. And that's, that's impressive. Again, every team that you play with, there's some communication that needs to go there. I got it, I got it, me, me, whatever it is. The shortstop took control, got everybody out of the way, and made a big catch right there. One down for the West. <laughs> Dexter McLeon Jr. steps back up to the box, goes by DJ, plays outfield, right-handed pitcher, goes to Buford Middle School. Yes, sir. I think a name we're all pretty familiar with in our perfect game family, Dylan Lesko, drafted this year to the San Diego Padres out of Buford High School, first round pick. Football and baseball around the Atlanta area, Buford is always good. Dexter shared his mom and dad. They're his inspirations, showing him daily how successful they are. And we mentioned it. You can see the height. You can see how tall he is already in this box. Probably one of the tallest players here. He shared that being tall has had its issues in baseball. I train extremely hard, though. Take care of my body the right way to be successful. Well, Again, we, I think we've talked about it a little bit about playing multiple sports. Uh, I, I'm just a big fan of multiple sports because it helps your body. It trains your body naturally by doing different things and different movements now. McLeon rips that ball into right field. He's going to turn and burn for second base. Dives in for a one-out double for Team East. Again, nice and easy, nice and easy, letting the ball get there, using his hands more than his body, getting his body out of the way. The ball was up. Again, we watch uh, TV. We see the highlights. Most balls that are hit for doubles that are out of the ballpark are balls that are up in the zone and allow guys to get their good swings on them. He was hit by a pitch in his first at bat, so you know he had to be excited to get a chance to rip that ball. Absolutely. Show the skills. That's what this game's all about. It's fun to watch him. Go out there, hit doubles, and have a good time playing baseball. One down, that brings up JL Santos. Santos also hit by a pitch in his first at bat. So another opportunity for him to swing it. That's what these guys love to do, by the way. They've got these beautiful bats. They want to swing it. They want to make contact. That's what baseball is all about, is getting the barrel to the ball and figuring out how to do that. But what I really uh, love, again, I'm always about competing. You know, you got two strikes on, you don't see any confidence go down in any of these hitters when they get two strikes. It's all about battling and trying to figure it out. And that's, that's a great part about learning and feeling that, f figure it out at an early age against top competition. Good pitch from Martinez. It brings the count to one and two. Santos shared with us favorite subject is science. He said he likes to experiment with things and with graphing data. Favorite teacher is his ELA teacher because he can talk to him about anything and gives him good advice. McLeon steals third, the ball's overthrown and he'll come home to score. The East leads eight to three in the fourth. Good heads up base running by Dexter McLeon Jr. It definitely was, and I think that's the thing I tell people all the time. Speed causes confusion. Third baseman was just a little bit late getting to the bag. Actually, the catcher's throw was pretty good down the, to the, to the uh, bag, but the third baseman was a little late getting there, which makes nobody be there to catch the ball and allow the ball to go to left field, give another run up. Again, you're playing against some of the top athletes at your age, and everything has to be in sync in order to get out. Look, you score a run, you sign a baseball. That's how easy it is. 
This ball Just is out. tagged and gone in a hurry. JL Santos wow. in his second AB doesn't waste it. Marlon, your jaw is dropped. Wow. Those hands were so quick. They're coming through the zone. And again, it's all about confidence or whatever. The run scores from the good base running. The pitcher may be a little frustrated. Throws the ball again that's down the middle of the plate, probably a little bit elevated. And the hands and the speed coming through the zone is so impressive from some of these young kids right now. That's a line drive home run to left, no doubt about it, for JL Santos. And Pablo Martinez knew it right away. No, absolutely. And the catcher set up away, and, and that's what happens. Once you lose a little composure, catcher set up away, the ball leaked back to the middle, middle inside part of the plate. And with hitters like this and athletes like this is on the baseball field, it's rarely that you can get away with doing that when the guy's looking for a fastball. The East team extends their lead by six. That brings up Peanut Rivera out of Sanford, Florida. Math and science, favorite subjects for him. What's up, JL? There he is, the home run hitter. Favorite subjects for Rivera. Math and science, he said they're fun to learn. I also like to do different science projects. What's really cool is that we get to learn a lot about these young men. And I like to know what they enjoy studying in school. There's a big strikeout for Pablo Martinez. I like to, I like to learn that about them. It tells me a lot about these young guys. The game has changed, you know, it, it's being able to come and, you know, write down and make the guys think about what they like. You know, that, that's one thing. And when I was young, we played baseball. We didn't have so many people that were involved in baseball caring about what we learned in school or if we liked school or what teacher we like. And I think it's good because it makes the player and the athlete more well-rounded and not just the athlete or the jock who's playing baseball all the time, but you can be well-rounded and play this game and love it and be good at it. Two outs, Hunter Elmore steps in for the East team. He rips that pitch right back up the middle for a two out single. Check out our Rawlings home run of the game. Rawlings, the number one baseball brand. My goodness. That was a situation, big situation, grand slam. Getting your team up early, finding that momentum. Again, baseball's a game of momentum, and he gave his team a big shot in the arm really early in this game. That was Julian Martinez of the East team. And here he is again, his second at bat of the game. Very similar, I mean, the bat speed for both of these young men <laughs> off the charts. We're not charting that here right now, but my goodness, I would love to see that. Well, just the, the ball take it off of the bat again. I, I, I said something about the barrel not getting out there early in this game and this inning. It seemed like uh, they must have heard me and tell me that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong because <laughs> this inning they've been getting the head out and hitting the ball really hard and doing some special stuff. A quick check on Elmore at first. Martinez shared he's from the Lower East Side, New York City. That's my home. That's my home. Lower East Side, I love that so much. His mother, Janelli, father, Ralph. He shared that his whole family inspires me to be great. I see how hard they work to reach their goals. And it only makes me want to work harder. I'll tell you who's working hard, that catcher, that nice ball in the dirt, put his body out there, blocked it up, didn't let the runner advance. I, again, in games like this, you know, I, I believe every side has an opportunity to score a lot of runs, but keeping that guy at first base makes the home run or a triple <laughs> being the be pitch to beat him. Nice pitch there. Great pitch from Pablo Martinez. You mentioned it, Lucas Smith behind the plate catching him. The East team extends their lead 9-3 to three at the 12U PG Select Fest. Welcome back. We've got a crowd out here at the East Coast Complex in Marietta, Georgia for the 12U Perfect Game Select Festival. I'm Danny Wexelman with Marlon Anderson. The East team extends their lead 9-3 in the fifth. Camilo Gutierrez will take the mound for the East team. Having a quick conversation with his guys. You can see behind the plate, Masia will be his catcher. Make sure they get on the same page. He wants to show off the goods. Absolutely. Again, 5'10 lefty. We have a lot of lefties today. And, I, and I, that, that's 
for me, that, those are the guys that are elite in pitching. When you can throw this hard as a lefty at 12 years old, have control, throw all three pitches, this is a group to watch just in general with the arms that are out here. Gutierrez out of Barcelona, Venezuela. A little rocker step on the mound. Big breaking ball for strike one. That is the, the pitcher from Houston. Who does that? The guy from Houston, the, the Astros, that that's the little pause in the step back or whatever. This is something that, again, it throws off the rhythm of the hitter, and it makes <laughs> you have the advantage as the pitcher. A quick 0-2 count for Gutierrez. He's facing Drew Wilson. Batting second in this lineup for Team West. The arms, the balls that are coming out. Again, all the all the pitchers today, they're they're 77, 76, 77, all the way up to 80 miles per hour on a consistent basis. You're facing some of the top arms as 12-year-olds in the country right now, and you know they're showing their good stuff on TV here today, which is great for all of us. Wilson able to check the swing, brings the count to two and two. He shared his mom as a person and student is someone who inspires him because she's hardworking, smart, and driven. My dad is an athlete as he chops that ball on the ground to Gockenbach, who makes the play at first, but the speed from Wilson. So they've got a leadoff base runner from Drew Wilson for Team West. That's impressive. If you watch the back and forth there, it's a rhythm thing, it's a timing thing, but you can still see before he releases the ball, he's in good position to be able to throw and have good balance, which allows him to throw strikes like he is right now. So a leadoff base runner for the West. They trail by six. That brings up Lucas Smith. Good block by Masia, but you mentioned it too, the job that Lucas Smith did last inning behind the plate, the McKinney, Texas native. His parents, Charles and Natalie. Buster Posey, someone who inspires him. That ball's ripped just foul. Of course, a catcher respecting one of the best in the game. He shared that he was an amazing hitter and catcher. Always looked athletic behind the plate and managed the pitching rotation to three World Series championships. He also shared Ted Williams, a big inspiration as well. Well, being a catcher, it's the toughest job on the field to do. Putting that equipment on and getting back there, being in control of the game, calling the pitches. But that, the work you do on blocking pitches, you know, again, at 12 years old, the lessons you've had, you, how you've been taught, you can see it that comes out on, on the field in a game like this. The hard work that they put in. is ripped right back up the middle for a base hit. Wilson advances to second base. So now the West has a little now, something cooking in the top of the fifth inning. They have three more, three more bats to either tie this game or go ahead. So uh, again, these are the best, the, the, the elite. They're, they're paying attention. As you see, balls are going up the middle, opposite way, not trying to do too much, taking advantage of what's been given right now. Luis Almeida will step in. We mentioned it, that the East team was incredible. Those first three innings plus on the mound with a dozen strikeouts. Yeah, and, and again, when you get that many strikeouts against the top players, that's saying that arms are really good. And they're, you know, I, I say hiding the ball. It's kind of like being deceptive in their motions in their delivery to the plate. Almeida watches that ball. He shared with us his dad played baseball in Puerto Rico. His grandfather from his dad's side also played baseball. And mom, she played volleyball. Big swing from Olmeda and Gutierrez evens the count two and two. And you see a little frustration from the hitter, but I, I think that's because, again, we're facing <laughs> lefty after lefty after lefty with good stuff like that. I'm a left-handed hitter. I was a left-handed hitter. It's tough facing guys at this kind of velocity. Both runners take off. 
Drew Wilson, Lucas Smith, a double steal, slide in safely. Kyle Tucker, the third base coach for the West team. They get themselves into scoring position, Marlin. One down in the top of the fifth. They trail nine to three. And we got some good research from the truck. It's Luis Garcia with the Astros that has that little rock back motion that go. actually goes into pitching. I, again, it's such a rarity. You don't see it very often, but you remember, and, and again, like you emulate the guys that are doing it at the top level, that's doing things that's really good, and you try to be your best version of them, I guess. Hudson Brown steps in, left side of the box. And he takes a strike from Gutierrez. And again, 75 miles an hour from a lefty, lefty, lefty situation. Guys in scoring position, got a battle here. You're like, where's my relief? Brown chops that ball through the left side. Wilson will score. Smith will score. A two-run single for Hudson Brown. Uh, I'll tell you what, the never give up attitude of these players in situations. Their team's down here, but you're having good at-bats. And it's good at-bats against tough pitchers. That's, this is a tough matchup with two strikes here against a lefty, throwing that fastball up. and He's got good velocity on the ball, too. Luke Esquivel rips that ball. First pitch swinging. Out of here in a hot second. Escavel brings the score within two. This is the great thing about this, the competitive nature, the tough competition, and still being able to play your best and do the things to help your team win. I tell people that are watching this game, there's two runs now. Last week, I scored in the sixth inning where eight runs were scored to come back and tie the game. When you have elite players playing and you have them competing at this level, you never know what you're going to see. That is such a nice swing. The curveball, he waited on it. First pitch curveball. It hung up. It came to the uh, middle part of the plate, and he had just a touch of a little bat flip. As he, you know, everybody in the ballpark knew that ball was going. It was the only problem is like whether it was going to be fair or foul. <laughs> Easily fair, though. Somebody better go find that baseball, get an autograph. The Rally Monkeys working for the West team. They come within two in the top of the fifth. <laughs> well, I'm glad I didn't park down that way because uh, that, that, that ball's in the parking lot up there somewhere. <laughs> Caleb Foster will step in. Ripped a double in his first at bat, came home to score. 16 runs between the two teams already this afternoon. It is a beautiful afternoon in Marietta, Georgia. The competition level, again, pitchers out there, he's, he's the best at what he does. You got some of the best hitters, and they're competing against each other. I mean, no, no lead is safe here with the type of hitters and the type of players that are on the field today. Foster's parents, Kyle and Cassie. He was part of the 11 U Select Festival as well. And good pitch from Gutierrez. Yes. As you watch here, uh, again, like earlier, the rhythm, the timing, the back and forth on the mound, the rocking chair, he's no longer doing that. Foster <laughs> works the walk. Sometimes I wonder, it's like, you know, they have things they want to do as a player, and you, you do I always say you go back to what's normal and what's familiar to you when things start to tighten up and the game gets a little closer and the heartbeats gets a little faster. I think, and that's the thing with adversely in, in games like this, it's what brings out the true failure or success, good or bad. They have to make that decision now and start to do things a little bit different. It's a game of adjustments. That'll bring up Adrian Viella. Walked and scored a run back in the second. Foster slides in safely, takes second.
Viella shared that there are a few people who inspire me. Said my mom, my dad, my batting coach, Luis Valenzuela. Said mom inspires me and always motivating me to never give up no matter how bad my tournaments might go. My dad inspires me because it pushes me hard and says don't give up. I wonder if the rally monkey also might inspire this West team. I don't know. It's just the competitiveness, you know, competing against each other. Guys, you know, you may play against sometimes in tournaments, but to have this championship mode going on in a game like this, the competition level is just so, so, so good for young 12-year-old kids uh, right now in baseball. And we talked about this, Marlon, at 12 years old, this event didn't exist for you. No. Were you this good at 12 years old? I don't know about being this good. I hadn't played as much baseball. I mean, all these guys on the field, my 12-year-old experience and their 12-year-old experience is totally different. So you, it's hard to compare. I like to think I was, but it's, they're, they're playing a lot of baseball and doing a lot of things that I know I didn't play and was exposed to at this age. Gutierrez gets the strikeout, two down. Foster takes off for third, and he'll come on home. Dives in safely, the West team within one. And, th and this is good, all, all the players, everybody's bringing whatever game they have, they're bringing it to the, to the field today. And you no know, situation like that, you're thinking, well, they're down by one, they can get the base hit and, you know, be down. You make things happen, you know, Preston's pushing the envelope, Lou's pushing the envelope, they're having fun out here. And you're teaching guys to be aggressive and do the right things and have that passion to do it all the time. Caleb Alexander will step in with two outs in the top of the fifth. The West team climbing all the way back. The score now nine to eight. Alexander had a bases clearing double. Made it five to three back in the second. And th these are games that, e even situations like this, you know, we, we've had pitchers give up the home run. We had the grand slam that was given up, the big home run. This is the adversity that I talk about in baseball that's gonna create the character of what kind of ball player these guys are gonna be. Failure, you learn so much from failure, and I believe that kids need to fail sometime and not to be the best every time, to be able to get something from it and learn from the game and be able to come next week or next tournament or whatever and be able to draw from that experience of that failure. Gutierrez gets the strikeout. Two strikeouts in this frame, but the West team climbs all the way back. They're down by one. We move along at the 12 UPG. Preston, can you hear me? Copy, copy. Hello. Thank you, thank you. Copy that. Oh, great. Team West put up a five spot in the top of the fifth they come within one run of this game and we get to bring in Preston Wilson manager of the West team a decade in the big leagues my friend your team battling back did you say anything to them I saw the rally monkey out there yeah they had the rally monkey out there but more than anything I told the guys I felt like their bats were going a little quick take that deep breath try to slow the game down you know, try to go pitch by pitch. We were down a bit there, so nobody's going to hit a fire run home run, so just take it one at bat at a time. But I think they were pressing a little bit, trying to do too much early, and uh, we saw better at bats uh, in the last couple innings. 
how, how impressive are the left-handed pitchers on both sides? Uh, you got a lot of left-handed pitchers, which mean a lot of left-handed hitters are having to face those left-handed pitchers. How tough is that for the kids at this age, seeing some elite left-handed pitching? Uh, you can definitely tell some are having trouble with it, some are having trouble picking up the ball, picking up spin. Uh, but then I've seen some make some adjustments to try to get uh, competitive in the at-bats. But it's tough. It's tough at this distance. Yep. Uh, the mound is close. These got big, strong kids. They're throwing the ball hard. So I'm impressed to see a 12 and under group being able to make these type of adjustments. Preston, I feel like the past couple of days, you're having as much fun as these young men are. And you told me earlier in the week, you said, I'm just a chisel. I'm, I'm not gatekeeping the information. I want these guys to grow, and I want to help them be the best. As you see, Angel Gonzalez is going to take the mound for your West team here. What does make you feel good about the game when you see these 12 and under players out here? Well, I feel like the game is in good hands because we got kids coming up that want to play. They want to be on the team. They're not out here complaining about anything. They're taking these conditions that they have, and they're making the most of them. Some of these guys may not have played in a little while. Some of them might not, you know, have seen these, some of the players here, but they are competing, and they're not making any excuses. So I feel very good about the state of baseball in a few years uh, upcoming because these kids want to be out here. Preston Wilson, thank you so much, my friend. Uh, thank you. All right, and Angel Gonzalez working quickly. He strikes out Ethan Stewart for the first out in the bottom of the fifth. Gonzalez out of East L.A., California. He just looks like a baseball player, Marlon. Absolutely. I think you look around this field and you see, again, you've been around for a couple of days and you, and you see the competitiveness, but you just, like, like Preston said, they love the game. They're competing. They're having fun, and that's what you want to see. I tell kids at every level, like, don't lose that competitive edge of playing against your opponent. You can know them and hang out with them and, you know, kind of, you know, these guys are have the player lounge and they're getting to know each other. But when you get on the mound between the lines, it's all about competing and trying to win and trying to help do the best for your team. And if you can keep that, you'll play at a better level, uh, in, at an elite level, and you'll be better at what you do. Robert Masia steps in. He's been behind the plate catching for Team East today. He walked in his first at bat. He's also rocking the puka shells. I told you guys, puka shells are back. I don't know if they know, Marlon, why they love the puka shells. I just think that they know or they feel that it makes them look good, and that's all that matters. Uh, I, I went through that phase. <laughs> I went through that phase. Can't remember where that came from. Can't remember, but I, I did wear them at one point in, in, in my life when I was on the baseball field. Everything repeats. Everything comes back, I guess. A good pitch from Gonzalez, painting the corner, strike two. And we talk again, another left-handed pitcher. One of the smaller left-handed pitchers today, but ball's coming out of his hand really well, and he got pretty good stuff there. Masia able to work the one-out walk. That brings up Yomar Infante. He ripped a double his first at bat, and that ball was smoked. The bat speed that he was able to show in his first at bat was elite, in my opinion, Marlon. Absolutely was, and, and again, you know, the I'm a bloodline person. His, his dad was a longtime big leaguer, played the game the right way, did things right, and you know, again, he gets that professional teaching every single day, but coming out here in competition and being able to turn that light on like that, very impressive for him. Quick check of Masia. First base umpire Michael Waller calls safe. That ball just gets away from Evina. So Masia will take second. And this is the beginning for uh, the East right here. They need to add on a little bit. This, you know, they haven't been complacent in a say, but uh, the West is coming back and starting to put the bat on the ball a lot, a little bit more. And we got, you know, Three more at bats for them. They get to finish this one and two more. And, you know, this is going to be a tight game, but they got to kind of wake up and kind of answer them right here. Be a little bit of a good vibe for their team right now. Richard Avina going to have a quick chat with Angel Gonzalez. The West team just worked so hard. They put up a five spot in the top of the fifth to come within one run of this game. You heard Preston Wilson who said it. They've got the rally monkey on their side. Infante again 
Rips that ball through the right side. Masi is going to hold up at third. And Infante is heading for second, slides in safely. Good heads up baseball right there. You see the throw that's over your head as a base runner, as you're turning and you see that ball's up over your head, it's, you're, you're supposed to take off the second base. It's almost impossible for the ball to get the home plate and then still be able to throw you out at second base. Once the ball's up in the air, you keep going. Again, that's fundamental sound baseball. I'm sure his dad has preached that to him time and time again over the years. A nice diving try by Esquivel over at first base. So now you've got runners on second and third, one down. Anthony Badillo will step in for the East team. And, and just talking a little bit more about that play. This is a close game. It's going to be close down the line. Youngsters that are out there listening, if you hit your cutoff, man, every single time, teams will never take extra bases on you. By not hitting this cutoff man coming from right field there, you don't keep the double play in now. If you got the double play in order with these kids right here, one pitch, two outs or whatever, you get out of the inning and you got a chance now to come back and score and try to add on and, and take the lead from the other opponent. But now they can actually add on a run without even getting a base hit, sack fly, a lot of things in play right here. I feel like no matter what the level, Marlon, I, I talk about this a lot, the fundamentals never go out of style. And, and, and that's so true. Again, in, in, in high school, in college, in professional baseball, in the major leagues, the more fundamentally sound you are, the more success you're going to have as a club. Gonzalez again catches that corner for strike two to Badillo. One, two. One, two. Badillo shared one of the greatest challenges he's overcome is pitchers who throw faster. Over time, teams getting better, making the adjustments. Gonzalez loses his hat. I think next tournament, we're going to recommend like a hat strap for all the hats that are falling <laughs> off. <laughs> a hat strap. I don't know if that's in style, Marlon. I don't know about that. It's man. not in style. I know. <laughs> I know for sure it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think these kids would go for that. And there's a punch out for Gonzalez. He gets the call from home plate umpire Colton Black. Two down for West. That's a tough pitch on the outside part of the plate. Looked like it may have gone around the plate and not over the plate, but, but again, nice pitch. He was able to get out of the inning. The umpire called the strike, so we move to the next hitter. Caden Borsherding, good play, coach. Rico Billups, soft hands, nice job. Caden Borsherding will step up, two down in the bottom of the fifth, two on for East. They've surrendered their big lead to the West team. That ball's fouled back. So we got a close one here in East Cobb. This, this is what it's about. Again, you got a chance here. You want to add on. They came, they hit, uh, added on last inning. They're coming back. It's a close game now. It'd be great to get this base hit and get these two runs across the plate, kind of give the pitcher coming in next inning just a little breathing room. Borsherding, the son of Jason and Jackie. He said, my parents inspire me, my dad's coached and developed me as a player, helped me achieve what I have to this point. And my mom's one, been one of my biggest supporters. She is at every one of my games. I couldn't be where I am without them. He said, my teammates also inspire me. Our team, very talented. We push each other to get better and compete at a high level. And I think that's the thing that Perfect Game does, you know, being able to play in events and you, you're traveling, you're playing with different teammates but they push you to be better in everything you do. I, I think that competitive edge that the, you, you're learning, for, for me, sometimes, you know, you don't know how good a guy's going to be, be teammates on, on travel ball teams. But it, it's showing that it's all about the coach that you have and what they bring out of you because good team play is hard to find sometimes, and you have to instill in them and hold them up uh, accountable to that kind of play. That was a good check on the runner, by the way, from Richard Avina over to third base. Borsherding has a full count in the bottom of the fifth, two down and two on for the East. Eight. 
He hits that ball. What a play from Gonzalez. Two runners stranded for the East team, and Angel Gonzalez been working on those PFPs, Marlon. Great job by him fielding his position. Sticks the glove out and makes the play. West within one. Welcome back to the 12U Select Festival presented by Perfect Game. This is how we got to the 9-8 score. The East team just hanging on. The West put up a five spot in the fifth. We've seen the ball leave the yard a couple of times. We had a grand slam. That home run by Esquivel brought his team even closer to the East. You can see there, Julian Martinez back in the first with a grand slam. JL Santos, a solo home run as well. And here is our game summary presented by Yeti, built for the wild. Both teams with seven hits apart. We head to the sixth inning. And we've talked a little bit about this young man. Now we're gonna get a chance to see him on the mound, Dexter McLeon Jr. Six foot tall, has to be the tallest guy out on the field, I believe, Marlon. <laughs> he's definitely one of the, and, and, and again, uh, seeing him and seeing what he's bringing to the table, he actually, they moved from, I think, Alabama, I think uh, maybe the Hoover area. His mom's from Bessemer, talked to her last night, got a good story about just about them and what they did. But moving over here to Atlanta to get more notoriety for him, she's got a you know coaching job over at Buford. So again, it's all about the parents making the sacrifice for the kids to be able to get out here and play this game that they love so much. He's gonna face Logan Pascarella leading off for the West team. Dexter shared with us, he's a power pitcher. Wow, that was a pretty pitch. Up to 82 for his fastball. Marlon, so we'll hopefully get an opportunity to see some of that as he'll get the top of the sixth to himself for the East team. Ball's cutting on him just a little bit or whatever. Uh, again, good movement out of his hands. Just got to get it over the plate right here. Pascarella works the leadoff walk for the West. We saw them put up five last inning. They've worked their way all the way back in this game with the help of the Rally Monkey. Marlon? Absolutely. I mean, whatever, whatever it takes to get the, the, the best out of what you're trying to do. Uh, they, they've been battling. This is such an elite group, and they're going to battle all day, and no matter who's on the mound or who's at the plate, it's going to be good competition. That'll bring up Pablo Martinez. And, and again, you know, I, we can get some footage of how far he's stepping. Now, he's six foot tall, and just at the edge of that pitching mound there, a lot of the taller pitchers have had problems on where they actually want to step and if they're going too far or trying to uh, shorten their stance, which will always con um, affect the control of a pitcher. Big swing from Martinez. That was 82. Out of the Here hand. it is, top left of your screen. You can check out the velo from these young men. Martinez shared his favorite team, the Mets' favorite player is Edwin Sugar Diaz, which is why we heard the trumpets when Martinez took the mound. All right, now it makes sense. Great job by the DJ down there, and great pitch from Dexter McLeon Jr. for the strikeout. And it's funny what, what actually helps you to find your rhythm. Him getting in the stretch and being quick directly to the catcher has helped him get in a better rhythm. And all those pitches were more uh, right over the plate, kind of some of them up a little bit, but he was able to throw it past the last hitter. Brayden Landry will step in. Landry out of Washington. Favorite team, the Mariners, is that ball. Just a tough pitch from McLeon. I love the game of baseball and, and watching what goes on. You got the curveball here. His first curveball he's thrown. 
But if you see the base runner took off again, like as a base runner, you're looking in at the catcher's sign, trying to get that edge, and maybe he saw the curveball and knew he was going to go on that pitch regardless. And again, it was a curveball. It wasn't a good curveball. Went to the backstop, and he was able to get the second base easily there. Yeah, impossible to make that play for Borsharding behind the plate catching Dexter. But talk about that velo hitting 82 again on the radar gun. Here are the fans right outside the stadium, right outside our field here at the East Cobb Complex in Marietta, Georgia, watching the 12U Perfect Game Select Festival. Last weekend, we had the 11U teams here. They had a grand slam in their game. We've seen the bats come out to play. We see some, some, early, some early hits from um, the team in the East, and then they took their lead to 9-3, and after that, the West has actually stepped up and came back and made it a one-run game now. Yeah, Again, we love to see absolutely. it. Absolutely. You want to see it come down to the wire, the co competition. You want things to get tight at the end just to see how the players are going to react in these kind of situations. Landry works the walk, so two runners on for Aaron Garcia, the home run derby king this afternoon. The throw down to third, not in time. So Landry slides in, or Pascarella, excuse me, slides in safely. He went to turn to come home on the throw, and he is going to be awarded home. And that's going to tie the game up. East and West, nine apiece. Watch this play unfold one more time. Well, if you've noticed all day, ball has gotten away from third basemans all day. All of them have been a little little late getting to the bag. And once you get there and the throw goes past as a third baseman, second baseman, wherever you are, you can't interfere with the, uh, of the, the momentum of the runner. You can't be in front of the runner. And they're going to call you every time for interference and give him that extra base, which he was able to score because of that. But again, that's one of those things. As you get older, the bases are a little bit further apart, so you don't have to uh, leave your position so early. Right now, all the third basemen are just being a little bit late. Landry takes off for third. They've just been a little bit late covering the back, which is making it tough on, on catchers to be able to throw that ball down the third base. Aggressive base running by the West team paying off. Kyle Tucker, the third base coach for West. And you've got Aaron Garcia at the plate, a 3-0 count. Not swinging, he wants to see the strike. 83 on that one. He comes back and works the count all the way back to full. Garcia shared he's got sneaky pop can see him in the box there and lifts that ball out of play right above us marlon right on top of us right on time right on cue <laughs> yeah he shared he's got sneaky pop very good base runner Come on, buddy. that ball just goes over the head of borsher ding but landry will stay on third Garcia will walk, so runners on the corners. Trip Riley will come up to the plate. And this is situation again. We got a tie game now in the top of the six. Things have been going well. Things have been going your way. It's a little bit out of character right now. But again, good players on both sides mean they're going to compete. What's going to happen now that things are getting a little tight? The throw down to second base. Not in time. Garcia slides in safely. Borsharding showing off the arm. That's a good arm, good throw, good release by everybody. As you see, one of the things that, you know, again, the fundamental things, being a middle infielder coming up and all, it's how you cover the bag at second base. Your shortstop coming across, even if you're a second baseman coming across, you want to get to the bag, and if the throw takes you up the line, you want to come in front of the runner, not over the runner. Uh, and, and it's one of those things that I think is fundamental. They're playing at a smaller field. The athletic uh, system of the different players, it's, it varies from time to time, but you can never be late covering the bag. And sometimes you, when you're late, you can't get in front of the throw like you're supposed to on either side. So those are just fundamentals that they'll learn as they play more baseball. 
You saw Lloyd Thompson come out and check on Garcia over at second base, part of the coaching staff for the West team. Also probably the best BP thrower I've ever seen. <laughs> Everyone wants Lloyd Thompson on the mound when they're taking BP. So Trip Riley, 0-2 in the count. Another ball that gets away. You can see Landry's got a pretty nice lead over at third base, but he stays put. And now the bases will be loaded. That one caught him. Now batting catcher, Richie Avina. And you can see young guys, he's definitely hadn't thrown a lot of all-speed pitches. He doesn't have the touch for his curveball or slider or whatever. He, he bounced one to the outside, and this one he threw behind him a little bit and just, just barely hit him, I guess. But again, in situations like this, when things are tighter, guys in situation, you want to tend to go to things with the things that you're comfortable with. He's comfortable throwing his fastball. He's 83 miles per hour. Right now, it's not going to be the time he's going to learn how to throw a good breaking ball. You just got to go at what he can do, and it's probably going to be his fastball from this point moving forward in this inning. What a great opportunity for Richard. Avina steps in with the bases loaded. The game is tied in the top of the sixth. The West team has come all the way back. Down five to nothing back in the third. They put up a three spot in the second. They put up five in the fifth. They got one more in this to even the score. And, and this is the adversity that we talked about earlier. You're playing against some of the top 12 EOs in the country. They're just as good as you are. When something happens, what are you going to draw from? What are you going to do? Failure is not a bad thing in baseball. I tell you, these guys had an opportunity to learn from some good stuff th today. Avina shared, I'm a consistent hitter. I spray the field. I've got power. The furthest ball, I've hit 320 feet. That would clear these fences here at the East Cobb Complex in Marietta, Georgia. We've seen Avina behind the plate for Team West, a great backstop already. Avina just misses. I'm looking at the second baseman. He's all the way back almost on the grass here. I know you want to probably try, try to try to keep a uh, double play in order if, if, if you want to try to do that. But maybe at this level, it's not going to get a lot of double plays. You want to keep that ball out of the outfield, try to get one run instead of two. That one gets away from Borshardine. Coming home to score is Landry. And the West team takes the lead 10 to 9 over East. And, and, and this is a situation, I, I, again, I think he tried to throw that curveball again. He had had it control over it all day. You're in a situation where you got two strikes on the guy, throw your best pitch, go ahead and throw that fastball, trying, trying to get contact for you to get a double play or a weak pop up or something like that, or maybe even a strikeout and get out of the inning. Landry took some pretty nice, healthy leads over at third base, able to come home and score. McLeon Jr. comes back and gets the strikeout of Avina. Two down for the East. That brings up Sammy Garcia. And you saw, too, the Avina all the way back in the box, and you can see here the same with Sammy Garcia. His back foot is touching the white chalk because Dexter McLeon Jr. is putting up 83s on the radar gun. Yeah, he, he is. They, they, they've got to make adjustments to <laughs> the good stuff, and that's what the good players do. You know, he, he's throwing gas, he's throwing hard. You, but one of the things they are doing, though, even though he's throwing hard, they're up on top of the plate, even though that fastball is coming in there like that. And maybe I was wrong. The curveball is coming back all of a sudden. That's a tough pitch again once he's making spots with his fastball like that. But he's got to be consistently throwing it, though. He's ahead in the count. 0 oh, and 2. Pauses. Showing us everything he has on the mound this afternoon. The pause in the stance on the, on the again, like, I'm sure guys watch it on TV and they talk about it a lot. And you get out there, you want to try it in a big situation. I'm, 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 I'm more old school and want to be consistent in what you do <laughs> time and time again. So I think that's fair, Marlon. That's fair. And he gets a swing from Garcia and the strikeout. So back to back K's, but the West team works their way back. They lead 10 to nine.
Welcome back to Atlanta, Georgia, the historic East Cop Complex. This is the perfect game 12 you select festival. The West team taking the lead. They are up 10 to nine, working their way back in this game. They trailed five to nothing back in the first. Trip Riley will take the mound for the West out of Spring, Texas. And now they're gonna try to hold their lead, Marlon, over the East team and try to go home winners today. Absolutely, it's, I love baseball so much and it's one of the things is it's confidence. You can see the West team now got them bouncing around the infield, throwing the ball to first base, doing all this stuff that they were down and not doing the same way earlier. Confidence breeds confidence. You know, they were able to come back, they tied the game, they had the pass ball, they scored, they went up. Now the confidence of the West team it's where it was last night during the banquet when everybody was talking a little bit. So it's going to see the what's going to happen with the East right now. Are they going to be able to answer and come back? And, you know, they got two at-bats here. They get the last at-bat, but they want to take that lead now and hope, hopefully close them down in the seventh. And he gets it trending. Motley swinging for strike one in the bottom Ooh. of the sixth. Motley shared, I'm good at the plate. I've got good on-base percentage, and I can come through with big hits in big moments. I also have a good read of the ball off the bat. We saw that when he made that excellent play in the outfield earlier in the game. And Trip Riley working quickly, one down for the West. Working quick, quickly and also working very precisely. I, I, he, he hit his spot a lot of times in during that at bat, but he had a confidence coming in. Again, you're getting the best 12 year olds. You, like last week, we kind of, toward the end of the game, the pitching kind of gave out. I don't really see that happening today. They got some guys with some good arms, and again, by the time you get 12, you get more developed, and you throw more strikes, and you compete at a lot higher level. Yeah, all these kids around the ballpark here to watch the Perfect Game Select Festival. What a special treat. It's Sunday at the ballpark, and you get to see the best 12 and under players in the country. Venezuela, Puerto Rico represented between the East and the West teams. This is Chase Gockenbach. We saw him on the mound earlier in the game, really impressive. At the plate, he shared he hits average. He hits for average with power. He's a situational hitter, and he's got a high baseball IQ. Self-evaluation, I love it. You gotta know who you are if you're gonna be successful at it. And, and I think at a young age, getting these kids to evaluate who they are and why they are will only help them in the future. He chops that ball on the ground. Coming over to make the play, Viella. Foul ball, foul ball. And it's a foul ball. Yes. After all that. When you finish the play, you make the umpire make the call. I like the third baseman coming through, making the play. Uh, umpire may make a mistake there and call it fair. Like I say, you finish them up. You'll never be embarrassed by making the play either way. No doubt about it. Gockenbach goes to Lakeway Christian Academy, a seventh grader. His travel team, TG D-backs scout team. You got the last two innings here. I, I tell you, the excitement's been great so far, but last two innings here, every hitter can either tie the game or add on to the lead here. It's it's okay. so it's so close. I mean, these guys are competing. This is what you want at the end of a game like this. You want the best players in championship situations competing against each other. A full count to Gockenbach as he ropes that ball foul. Another free souvenir for the fans. I see a young man racing after that ball to go and get it, maybe get some autographs. Well, the great thing, again, having all the tournaments going on around this big event and having the kids that want to linger over here and watch these kids play. And Riley comes back, gets the strikeout. Back-to-back -back Ks for Trip Riley. And again, a little bit out of the zone, but it's firm. Had a little time to make a decision on whether to swing or not, and that time he swung at a pitch that was up and out of the zone. Riley is a Nolan Ryan fan, so it inspires me because he's the GOAT. He pitched when baseball was a totally different game and dominated oh and commanded respect just with his mound presence. It's a pretty good guy to look up to, I'd say. 
if you're a pitcher and he's gonna face Caden Scott at the plate. Outside, one one. Scott tags that ball, see you later. Ties the game up with one swing, the East team back in this one it's 10 to 10 in the bottom of the six and, and that's what i'm talking about competing at the highest level against guys the later in the game it gets the heartbeat slows down or it speeds up for scott he just slowed the heartbeat down and took a great swing right up the middle to right center field from a right-handed hitter that's what you want to do stay simple in big situations got a pitch to hit and was able to drive it out of the ballpark and tie this game up late he went down and got it i don't know if anyone's going to get that baseball but I hope this young man gets the ball back, gets a high five from Kyle Blum over at first base. We're all tied up in the bottom of the sixth. And that's the fun part for us. I tell people, don't leave, don't, don't change the channel because this is what it's about. If you're gonna have the best 12 year olds in the country, <laughs> late in the game, you're gonna see somebody that's gonna step up in a big situation to win this game, so. Camilo Gutierrez tops up ball. Landry makes the play. This game's all tied up. 10 a piece at the 12 UPG Select Festival. Welcome back, we're all tied up at the 12 U Perfect Game Select Festival. A couple of balls that have left the yard. The pitching has been phenomenal. And these young men, the best players in North America, including this guy, Carter Moon, he's gonna take the mound for the East team. As I said, this game, basically starting over tied at 10 the west team working themselves all the way back carter moon sharing with us on the mound he's going to throw a fastball knuckle curve slider and sinker marlin i like to see it uh, i'll tell you what you know you any baseball game you want to go to you get to the last inning and it's a tie game going in you know you're going to have some more special moments to be able to finish it out and, and again that's what it's about you want to compete in baseball you want these guys to learn from the good and the bad the failures and the successes and that's what they've done today and again looking forward to this seventh inning to see who's gonna take this big game angel gonzalez steps in the leadoff guy for the west and hits a rocket off the bat gives the west back the lead his first hit of the game and he makes it count you, you can't speak more to the competitiveness of, of, of this. Steps in, new pitcher, first pitch. Never seen the guy before, steps up and takes a great swing on a pitch that was right down the middle of the plate. Changed the, the game right away. Again, gives your team the lead now. You know you got a chance to win the game in the bottom half of this inning. And this is so good to see these kids compete at this level like this. Gonzalez shared that he loves to watch Mookie Betts because he's a good outfielder, has a good arm, and he's a game changer. Well, so are you, Mr. Gonzalez. That's going to bring up Drew Wilson. First pitch swinging against Carter Moon. Drew Wilson got on and scored in his last at bat. He's a math fan. He said he likes to solve problems. My favorite teacher, Miss Roth, she's my sixth grade math teacher because she made learning math really fun. Any teacher I think that can do that, I'd love to give you a spot bonus if I could. Really impressive though, but I love to hear when these guys share about favorite teachers and whatnot. There's Mr. Gonzalez. He taught us a little something a moment ago. <laughs> Moon comes back and gets a strikeout. And the lesson, I, I'll tell you, the, the, the lesson to learn there from Mr. Moon is like, you can never just throw that get over strike in there. That was the first pitch of the inning. Everything's getting started. He was ready to hit the pitch. It was right over the middle of the plate. And he, again, the, the lesson is always have your best, always compete no matter what the situation is or the timing of it. So it, it, it's... It's just good to see the competition out here like this. Yeah, you come back and you get the strikeout. You don't let the home run affect you. That's not going to be the last home run, I feel, in this game. <laughs> I've got a good idea. Lucas Smith will step in with one out in the top of the seventh. And again, he's making more effective pitches now. 
He's hitting corners. Yeah, he's throwing the ball team. where he wants to a little bit more. And, and that's what you have to do. You have to compete no matter what the situation is. Smith's favorite team, the Dodgers, but he loves to watch Mike Trout play the game. He said he's extremely talented on so many levels. Hits nukes, steal bases, and robs homers in center field. The full count to Smith, that one over his head, it'll work a walk. Now batting center fielder, number 48, Luis Alida. Still, he gave up the home run there to start the inning, but he wants to minimize the damage, you know, give his team an opportunity to be able to come back and, you know, tie the game up or maybe win with a couple runs in the bottom half. Luis Almeida steps in left side of the box. He's looking for his first hit at the 12U Perfect Game Select Festival. He shared that his strengths could be fielding, hitting, running. His baseball IQ, his favorite subject is history. Carter, Carter Moon's a little, little, he's a little amped up right now. He's kind of jumping out there, coming off his backside, not controlling it well. And, it, and it's so funny you go from, you know, from one end bat to another of doing things right and then kind of losing yourself a little bit. Maybe you can get back in here and throw some strikes right here. His catcher, Julian Martinez, comes out, gives him a little word of encouragement. And Almeida works the walk. Also rocking some puka shells, the lucky puka shells, I'm guessing. That'll bring up Hudson Brown. Did some damage with his bat a couple innings ago. Brought in two runs. part of the 11 U Select Festival as well. We got a handful of guys out here who have been to back-to-back -back select festivals. Freddie Freeman, his favorite player because he loves the way Freddie plays the game. He's competitive and humble. He said Freddie never gets mad. He's always got a good attitude and he's a good dad to his kids. How about that? These guys are watching every part of the game, Marlon. It's it's really interesting because you think that maybe, well, they, they only know these major league players as the guys on the field. And then you hear something like that, and that's how closely they're paying attention to their role models. Absolutely. Martinez is going to come out and have another chat with Carter Moon. Moon, the Georgian native. I'm sure he's got a lot of family and friends here watching him. Yeah, he's got to just settle down here, get a strike over the plate. Um, again, he can't, he can't walk the bases loaded here in this situation. You got to let the guy put the ball in play. He gives up the walk to load them, Marlon. He didn't hear you up here. He didn't hear your advice. And coming up to bat. Luke Esquivel, dude went yard in his last at bat. Now he's got the bases juiced with just one down. These two teams going back and forth in the past few innings. The West leads 11 to 10. Angel Gonzalez tagged a home run at the top of this inning. The first batter to give the West the lead. And now there's going to be a meeting on the mound, Luke Collier. Pumping up his team, pumping up Carter Moon. Probably saying to him, hey man, have fun out there. Just have a good time. You gotta, you gotta enjoy the game. You wanna compete against you guys, but you know, nobody, everybody knows that if you don't throw strikes and allow contact, then there's no chance you can have success. So hopefully he takes this deep breath. I think that's what it's all about. I think everybody is around here that, you know, the, the West was down early. They had to take some deep breaths, 
you know, Preston spoke about what he said to them, which makes sense. And now it goes um, on the opposite side for Lou to get his guys to come down and just compete here. Esquivel tags that ball into right center, gets down, goes to the track. One run will score. Two runs coming in to score. And Esquivel with the hot bat. A two-run double gives the West a 13-10 lead. Who's hotter than Luke Esquivel's bat right now, man? <laughs> and I think it was an off-speed pitch. I think he threw a strike with an off-speed pitch there. And, and a lot of times, guys don't take the time to still swing. He's swinging. Bases are loaded. He's swinging. He's trying to do damage there. And, and got that ball to fall in the right field and a couple more RBIs for him. A little bit of insurance for the West team. Luke Esquivel has been phenomenal in this game. His brother Lolly was here two years ago. I'm sure Lolly is extremely proud of his younger brother. Absolutely. I'll tell you what, we're going back and forth. They got three runs up now, but I tell you, nothing is safe here. You know, last week. Yeah, nothing's That's safe. Not. That ball gets away from Martinez. So another run scores the West lead by four. Yeah, la last week they got eight runs in the eighth inning, where the sixth inning to tie it up late. It's going to be interesting to see if they're going to have any fight in the East when they get back to the plate here. Caleb Foster's at the plate. They check down over with first base umpire Michael Waller, who calls it a swing, can't hold it back. It's a 2-1 count to Foster. He walked and scored in his last at bat. One thing that might surprise us about Luke Foster, he likes to jam out to Miley Cyrus's party in the USA. Caleb Foster, excuse me. That's the soundtrack to his life. Marlon, maybe, gets him pumped up. <laughs> Whatever works for you. He would love to get this. Uh, I tell you, Carter, Carter needs to try to get this big strikeout, minimize the damage here again. Foster works a one-out walk, so now runners will be on the corners for Adrian Viella. And this is a situation, again, it's going to be failure successes. He, he, he's got to get back in the zone, give his defense a chance to help him out right here. Uh, slow it down, trying to slow the heartbeat down again. Again, the game will speed up on you a little bit, especially when you're not used to being on the mound in situations like this. So, Viela first pitch swinging, chops out ball foul. Just a lonely roll down the foul lines into and, the and, bullpen. And the West is not taking the chance as this lead is comfortable. They're going to try to continue to add on. They got the trying to steal bases, trying to do whatever it, it takes. Uh, Preston was here last week, and we saw those eight runs late in the game to come back and tie it up. So he's not taking any chances of letting up off the gas. No way. And there's an awesome mutual respect, too. I, I talked to Preston about his relationship with Luke Collier, who's managing the East team as Moon checks on the base runner at first. And the mutual respect is pretty cool to hear Preston Wilson talking about how hard Luke Collier worked and how impressive he was in the big leagues. That ball's lifted a mile high in the air. Martinez makes the catch two down for the East team. But I know this is a treat for you, Marlon, too, to be back here with so many incredible veterans of the game. Yourself, Preston Wilson, Luke Collier, Kyle Farnsworth. I know Tim Redding is up here with us, part of the Perfect Game family, too. Omar Infante, as you mentioned, his son Yomar here. But that's even cooler for these young men who get to pick your brains. It's just fun being around them and being a part of a game like this, it's different than playing, you know, because you have a chance to inspire the next generation. And I think that's the pride that we all take in being a part of stuff like this, is knowing that the younger generation is feeding off of some of our knowledge. That's a strike to Caleb Alexander. He had a bases clearing double back in the first inning. Got his team going for the West. He had one of the best responses to if he got a double, what would be his celebration? And and now I regret that I didn't look if he celebrated because he said he didn't have a celebration if he hit a double. He just deadpan, straight face, no celebration. 
He rips that ball into the trees. Lost and gone forever. A three-run shot for Caleb Alexander. And we'll get to see if he's got a, a celebration for the home run coming around, knocking in three runs right here, so. Alexander muscles up for the West. They lead 17 to 10. The Rally Monkey out in full force. And if you watch it, pitch, you know, tries to throw the slaughter, try to get it down and away, and his front side opened up. He left it kind of behind him, and it leaked to the middle of the plate. And, and, and again, as you watch highlights of any of the doubles, any of the home runs today, you'll see that the ball is left over the middle of the plate. Guys are making mistakes, and that's what you see in the big leagues on a nightly basis. When you make mistakes with the baseball, when you're playing against uh, elite athletes at whatever level you're at, whatever age you're at, those are the guys that are going to take advantage of those mistakes. So. There's a lot of lessons to be learned in all of this stuff. I think it's a tough day for, for Carter. But I know he'll learn from it in the future, he'll hopefully be able to take something from it to make him a better baseball player down the line. Now Alexander making Houston, Texas proud. Gets a little high five from Lloyd Thompson, his teammates. Separates this game a little bit. 17 to 10, the first time that the West has had a lead like this in the game. In the top of the seventh, we have two down, and we're going to see a pitching change. Carter Moon's going to come out of this game, and if my eyes are correct, that looks like Flip Waters to me. He's going to take the mound, come in, and try to keep this game where it's at so the East team can get back in the dugout. Now for All right, so Caleb Alexander, but check out Carter Moon. He knew, he knew right away. He, he did, and again, if you if you see that, you know, in, in the lesson, he tried to throw the best slider that he's thrown in, in all of his life. And sometimes when you do that, like say you leave the ball up, it kind of tail back over the middle of the plate. And every, everybody on this field today, every hitter has a possibility and the ability to be able to hit the ball out of the ballpark. And they're just taking advantage of mistakes when, when it happens. And, you know, you, you, you feel for Carter. But again, he didn't have to look back there and know. He's, he knew by the sound of the bat and the flip that it was uh, not coming back to the ballpark. That monkey's terrifying. It's just staring me in the soul, Marlon. <laughs> oh, my gosh. The rally monkey working for Team West. They have a seven-run lead in the top of the seventh. Flip Waters comes in to relieve Carter Moon. Waters shared that he's played up in every age until this year. He always had to play big. His coach, Tony Leonard, had a lot of confidence in him, and he said that helped me when I was playing up. He's going to face Logan Pascarella. Pascarella walked and scored to tie the game. He was the tying run. We've seen him on the mound as well. He chops that ball on the ground to Badillo, who fires over to first. And so East will get out of the inning. Flipwaters does a good job getting them back in the dugout. But the West team, Caleb Alexander, they lead 17 to 10. Perfect Game Select Festival on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by PG Cares. Grow the game by PG Tech. Turn your showcase results into higher exit velo by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. And by New Balance Baseball, proud partner of the Perfect Game Select Fest. Welcome back to the East Cobb Complex in Marietta, Georgia. The 12 U Perfect Game Select Festival. The West team, they lead by seven. They've worked their way back, had a couple of monster jacks from their team. And Drew Wilson's gonna take the mound to try to keep that lead out of Porter Ranch, California. Shared with us pitch selection, fastball, curveball, slider, changeup. He's going to face Carter Moon. We saw Carter Moon pitching last inning. Maybe he didn't get to do or show what he wanted. Marlon, by the way, Marlon Anderson, I'm Danny Wexelman. Thanks for spending time with us here this afternoon. But now he's going to get a chance to show off the bat, and I know he's got the bat. No, ab absolutely. And I think uh, 
the pitching didn't go well, but he knows that his team has time to be able to come back. He wants to be a table setter there, taking a couple pitches. It's always smart to try to let the inning get into a groove after a long inning like that. You know, your, your team is out there. You, you, you're pitching. You're out there, had a long inning. I always tell guys, once you kind of give up that seven spot like that, hey, you, you're competing, but you're also trying to let the other team get in a little trouble before you, you do what you're trying to do. Moon fouls two pitches back. He's a fan of the Bra excuse me, the Braves. I'm getting all choked up here. <laughs> the Braves, Marlin, and the Mariners, of course. Ronald Acuna Jr., Julio Rodriguez. Great guys to look up to. Absolutely. The J-Rod show. Drew Wilson show. How about that? A strikeout to start the inning. Now number 17, Flip Waters. That was a good pitch right on the outside part of the plate there. Again, uh, they have time. We've seen some comebacks last week. We've seen some comebacks already in this game. Pitch may have been a little bit off the plate, but again, when the umpire causes the strike, we, we roll with it. Flip Waters came in last inning of relief, in relief, excuse me, of Carter Moon. Still looking for his first hit in the game. He shared that his parents are the ones who inspire him. His parents, Jeremy and Tammy. He said, my dad worked so hard to allow me to travel and play the sports I love. My mom's always been willing to pitch to me, to get me where I need to be, which is often long car rides. Yeah, we all know about the long car rides for sure. Such a part of this game and so much time spent with your family on the road. The sacrifices that they're able to make. You can see Richard Avina warming up in the bullpen for the West team. But I, that ball hit on the ground over to Sammy Garcia, or excuse me, to Scott for the second out of the inning. Caden Scott. From 20, Georgia, Dexter McLeon. Yeah, highlighting the, the parents is always a great thing. I, I think, again, like everybody makes sacrifice and, you know, to be here and you know it's never it's, it's, it's never a bad thing to, to talk about the parents and give them the love that they deserve in situations like this that was Sammy Garcia my apologies nice play by him for the second out of the inning but yeah we talk a lot about it and the sacrifices and that's the age-old part of this game is that your parents have to give up a lot to get you to where you need to go absolutely Dexter McLeon jr. steps back in with two outs in the bottom of the seventh Hit by a pitch in his first at bat, doubled in his second, facing Drew Wilson. And you, you see Wilson out, and you, you saw his little delay in his uh, approach to the plate, his, his wind up. Everybody's, you know, again, like you're, you're trying to emulate the guys that you see on TV, and, you know, but again, they, he had good balance when he did it, he was under control. Guys try a lot of different things on the mound at this time because they see a lot of things from big league pitchers. And that one misses outside a two-walk out walk for McLeon Jr. Now batting number eight, JL Santos. JL Santos will step in. His home run made it nine to four earlier in the game. Got a dangerous bat already at such a young age. And Santos deposits that ball into right field, extends the inning for the East. And again, in every part of both of these lineups, there's never a, an easy out, you know. Again, they're the, the best players at their age group in the country. They come here, and it doesn't matter how many outs it is. Like, say, all of them can hit the ball out of the ballpark. You can get back-to-back -back hits. You can get doubles here and there. You have to compete on the mound against every hitter that you're facing, and that's what makes it so interesting. And again, the seven-run lead is definitely something that can be erased very quickly. Two on, two down in the bottom of the seventh. Jared Rivera steps in. He 
He's a math and science fan. He said they're fun to learn. I like to do different science projects. I would wonder if the advancement of analytics, Marlon, also lends its hand to more of these young guys being interested in math and science. Good pitch there from Drew Wilson. It's definitely a possibility. I, I think, uh, you know, coming and in, in, in being able to, to, for the numbers to be available, you know, that's one thing the perfect game does is it, it, it makes those numbers available to you as you're playing, as you're getting older, you know, you get in high school. That ball's gonna get away from Aaron Garcia behind the plate. The runners both advance. As, as they get older, the, the analytics is gonna, you know, be exposed to them the more they play perfect game with the track man and all the data that's being followed and tracked with them. And it's one of those things that, you know, they, they're able to use, they, they learn. And, you know, I, again, I, I spoke last week a little bit about it is perfect game has put a lot of pressure on minor league baseball and big league baseball about <laughs> furnishing these things because players now want to know the numbers and the why behind everything they're doing. Hudson Brown comes over from first base, has a little chat with Drew Wilson. The West team now with the opportunity to keep this lead two on two down in the bottom of the seventh. That ball bounces quickly back to Aaron Garcia at home. So McLeon stays over at third. Smart play again. We, we when you're down by seven, you don't want to make any outs on the bases, especially doing something being a little overly aggressive. You want to be smart. Let them drive you in. And good pitch from Wilson. He doesn't get the call, so Rivera will take first base. The base is now loaded for Hunter Elmore. Third baseman, number 13, Hunter Elmore. That was a close pitch there. And, and again, it's been a lot of two-out runs today, and, you know, you have to earn your outs. You have to, as a hitter, you have to battle, try to get your team back in it, and they need a couple runs here to be, be great for their team. Elmore, first pitch swinging. Went for the downs there. I love it. I love it. Being aggressive, pitches out over the plate, a little up and out of his zone, but I love the aggressiveness because he's a guy that can change uh, the game and make it a close game again real quick. One of your Alabama guys, Absolutely. Marlon. Absolutely. Yes, he is. His nickname, Big Country. It's a big swing. Yeah, Big Country's got to shorten up a little bit and make sure you make some contact here. Those first two of yours, but now you got to battle, try to help your team. Pass the baton to the next guy if you're not able to drive it out of the ballpark. Bases loaded, the one two pitch. Outside the count evens. It's funny watching watching guys again trying things in big situations like this that normally you, you wouldn't see a whole lot of guys do. Good eyes by Elmore. He works the count back to full. Okay. You're never off the hook here. That's the great thing about this. Every, every hitter is dangerous. There's no relief. And you have to make your picks, pick pitches and execute in every situation. But Drew Wilson able to come back and get the strikeout. East unable to push a run across. The West leaves them stranded. They lead by seven. We move to the eighth. Welcome back. I'm Danny Wexelman with Marlon Anderson, 12-year Major League vet. We're at the East Cop Complex in Marietta, Georgia. The East and the West going head-to-head -head at the Perfect Game 12U Select Festival. The West team leading by seven. A large lead. No lead is safe here. We know that. That's Flip Waters. He came on in relief last inning of Carter Moon. Snack time here at the field. I get it. I'm hungry, too. But Flip Waters is gonna come in and try to get his team back in the dugout as quickly as possible. Absolutely, it's time to put up a zero right now. You know, had a tough inning last inning. 
wasn't able to push any runs across, so you got to step up out there, make sure you can try to shut them down so the lead doesn't get any bigger than what it is right now. Stepping up to the plate, Pablo Martinez. Another guy who's taken up a lot of space in the box for Team West. Good solid stance. Big strong kid in the box right here. So it looks like maybe the ball got him in the foot, but he'll come back to the box. A 2-1 count. Waters comes back with a strike to even the count. Even though they have 17 runs, you got guys that haven't had a hit yet. So everybody wants to compete and, and, and do their part. Nobody's going to give in. Martinez will head down to first base, a leadoff walk. This is the stat of the game presented by New Balance. Balls ripped in the air over into right field. Gutierrez makes the play one down. And here is our stat of the day presented by New Balance. Here's the offense for the West. First time through the order, Marlon. They struck out 10 times, scored three runs. And as you can see, it got a little bit better and better and better. And then third time through those seven runs to take a massive lead in this game. Well, I think uh, that's like we talked at the beginning of the show. That's the everybody getting comfortable in their in their zone, slowing the heartbeat down a little bit, getting used to being out here with the cameras rolling and then everybody competing at top level. And, you know, every at bat, every time they go through, they're getting a lot better. That, I think that's normal for, for, uh, for the kids at this level. Again, they're, they're 12 years old on TV, doing a lot of things that is not normal for them in their daily life. So for me, the better the better um, the better players of coming out kind of late in the game after getting comfortable in the game. Yeah, we see this all the time early in the game. You're excited. You've been waiting all weekend long. The emotions take over. There is a massive crowd around the park to come see you play. And guess what? You're just 12 years old. Yep, exactly. It's a lot to manage in an all-star game, even if you're the most confident kid in the world. So it's completely understandable as Aaron Garcia rips that ball back. It's completely understandable to have those nerves shaken out a little bit. Oh, absolutely. And, and I think th those are the things that over the years they'll get better at. Uh, you, 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 can't, you can't get better at something until you go through it and you kind of see what it's all about. So maybe the guys that are, were here last year maybe having a little bit of an advantage, but for the guys that are new, it's a new situation and you have to learn how to deal with it. Garcia shared with us his brother and sister are two people that inspire him. A late call by the umpire, and he'll head back to the bench. A strikeout for Flip Waters. But I was saying his brother and sister, Andy and Alina, he said they work extremely hard, do very well in school. They've taught me how to put in the real work in order to compete at the highest level. And that's exactly what we're talking about, all that work behind the scenes. No one tells you about that you got to do if you want to be the best. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's, we look at it in baseball and we're talking baseball, but that's in life and, you know, a lot of life lessons to be learned through baseball. We get a chance to see Trip Riley again. He swings through a strike from Waters. Riley hit by a pitch his last at bat. And if you notice today, too, what, what you can uh, see, you get a lot of 0-2, 1-2 counts, and then the next thing you know, you're 3-2, and guys in the situ situation they're behind. Sometimes it's just easier to go ahead and put somebody away instead of trying to trick them, trying to make them swing at a pitch that's not a strike or throw things out of the zone because as a pitcher 
the deeper in the count it gets, for me as a hitter, I can see and recognize your pitches a lot better. It makes me a better hitter. And I think some of the guys get a little too tricky in 0-2 and 1-2 counts. Riley chops that ball to Gockenbach, who makes the throw over to first, and the East team will get out of it. They leave a runner stranded. But they trail by seven as we move along in the bottom of the eighth. Today's game break brought to you by PG Tech. Turn your showcase results into higher exit velo. We have had a lot of runs scored in this one. 17 in total between the East and the West. A lot of balls have left the yard as well. These guys putting on a show, the power out into the trees. Those balls are long gone. The East led this one early, but West has worked their way back. It's a dance break. Got to get your groove on. There's fans all around this field of the East Cop Complex in Marietta, Georgia. You saw him warming up earlier. Now he gets a chance to take the mound. Richard Avina from Whittier, California will step in for the West team and try to continue to give this team a chance to win the game, to hold off the East. They've put up zeros. Can they continue to do it? Well, we, we I can tell you this. With some of the best 12-year-old hitters in the country, I don't think this game is going to end up 17 to 10. I think there's <laughs> probably going to be a few more runs scored here today and uh, be exciting for the fans to be able to watch and pay attention to and continue to see a good game. Juju Martinez will step in. He'll try to put a couple runs across for the East team, get himself on the board. Math is his favorite subject. He said he's been able to excel at this sport. As he rips that ball foul, heads up. He expels, excels at the sport, or at the subject, excuse me, which has given him a hard time. His favorite teacher, Miss Brewer, said she was my favorite because she also made learning fun. School starting back up soon, these guys. What a cool experience for them to have before they head back to school. Get a chance to say they played at the 12U Perfect Game Select Festival. And there's a couple of uh, Georgia kids that I know are already back in school. Oh, so. man. <laughs> oh, man. So they're, they're having a weekend fest, but I uh, got some homework this weekend, possibly. Martinez went yard all the way back in the first. He led off the home run parade for the Select Festival. He lifts that ball in the air. Going back to make the catch is Foster. You know, again, if you're, if you're the West right now, you tell your pitcher, I'm sure Preston is saying, go out there and throw strikes. Make them put it in play. We got a good lead right now. We don't want to get behind. We don't want to walk anybody. We don't give any easy passes because that's going to be the way that they have an opportunity to come back and beat us. Ethan Stewart steps in. Swings at strike one from Avina. Avina, by the way, standing just five foot four on that mound right now. But man, his pitches are mighty. No, it's good. And size does not matter in baseball. I tell people that all the time. You know, you've been a little smaller than the rest of the guys and not comparing your size to the guys that are way bigger than you are. It doesn't matter. You get out there and you compete and you do and be the best player that you can possibly be. And there's a strikeout for Avina. I Two love, down for the West. I love the way Smith just chucked the ball down into third base yeah, before sure. it was even called yeah, a strike he because he, <laughs> <laughs> and it's almost put the pressure on the umpire to make that call because if he doesn't make the call, he looks bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. The confidence. The confidence from these guys. Oh, my God. Lucas Smith behind the plate. Two down for the West team. Robert Masia steps in, his catching counterpart, rocking 99. Two walks in the game today, scored a run. Plate discipline. At this age, be able to walk a couple of times like that. And again, he's a big kid, so maybe a little, not necessarily fear. People look at him and feel he can do a good job. 
We've seen the repertoire. Avina shared he throws a four seam, a knuckle curve, a slider, a cutter, and a changeup. He's got every pitch in the book. He said, pitching is always my strength, but I fell in love with catching last season. So my outlook has changed. And oh my goodness, Richard Avina, back-to-back -back Ks. I don't know, maybe you should give pitching a chance. The West team leads by seven. Let's check out our Oakley player spotlight. Oakley, be who you are. Caleb Anderson, my guy, six RBI in the game. He had a three-run double earlier, and then a three-run home run. Rally monkey and all, smiles all the way around. Man, unbelievable performance by Caleb Alexander. Now, this has been a day where, like, say, you're, ex you're, you're excelling, and now you got a chance to come in and and, and you know this, this this is such a, a fun game fun situation for all these kids you know you don't know what you're gonna do when you get out here you don't know what it's gonna but to be able to come and have a good game and to you know stand out in a in a in a crowd of really good pitchers and real good players all over the place for me that's the best part of this you know somebody's got to be the mvp somebody's got to be the guy and you are you're competing against each other you know you want your team to win but if you're scoring 17 runs, somebody's knocking those runs in, and you want to be that one to be able to have that opportunity for the MVP when all is said and done. 27 runs scored combined between the two teams, 15 hits in total. Richie Avina giving a little fist bump to Mr. Borsherding behind the plate. And he's catching Yomar Infante. Yes, you recognize that name. His dad, Omar Infante, debuted in the big leagues in 2002 played for the Tigers, the Braves, the Marlins. Avina chops his ball on the ground. Moon to first for the first out of the frame. Infante also played for the Royals as well. Second baseman, shortstop, third baseman. But he's got to be pretty elated to get to see his son Yomar pitching in this one, Marlon. Absolutely. You know, having, having a son to play, to play the game or whatever and be able to watch. And, you know, you know how hard it is to, to do this. And, and, you know, everybody's not, not going to be able to do it. Everybody's not going to be able to be successful. But to have a son who really wants to do it and to be able to help him to be the best he can, I mean, that's definitely a dream as a former big leaguer to have that son like that. Second generation. We saw that a lot in the draft this past year as Absolutely. Sammy Garcia rips a foul ball. Jackson Holiday, the number one overall pick to the Orioles, the son of Matt Holiday, Drew Jones, the son of Andrew Jones, so on and so forth. Obviously, Luke Collier, our manager of the East team, his son Cam going to the Reds. First round pick. All right, Mr. Infante, a strikeout. Two down for the East team. I, I need to see this again, Marlon. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he, he comes to the outside part of the plate and just kind of gets that block a little bit. And, and again, uh, confident catchers that are coming out of there and shooting it around the infield before the umpire even finishes his call. So. He's facing Caden Borsherding. Oh, excuse me. Angel Gonzalez. Back at the top of the order for the West team. Gonzalez went yard in his last at bat to give the West team the lead 11 to 10. He's going to leg out a double and stand up a two out double for Angel Gonzalez. <laughs> he's got his double move. I love it. That's his double he's celebration. Uh, and I'll tell you this, and he's probably one of the smaller guys on the field today. He's got the big home run and then just got the double on a pitch that was down in a way that he shot the left center field. You, you like to see that. And that, that's the thing about baseball. Again, I, I always tell guys, size does not matter as much. If you're going to practice, get good, and, and do all the things you got to do, he's not a guy that's trying to get out there and hit home runs and you know he's letting the ball get to him deep he's using his body his strength his hands the things that god gave him that makes him a good baseball player and he's taking advantage what? of those little things just saw a nice shot of caleb alexander six rbi day for him drew wilson steps in for the west team the east team will get a comeback in the bottom of the ninth try to take this game they're down by seven that ball's going to get away from borsherding so gonzalez advances to third 
That's a tough pitch. That's a bit inside. Wilson can't hold his swing. A strike for Infante. I get one thrown behind me and then paint on the block away from me. That's a tough adjustment from one pitch to the next. Do you think dad steps in the box when he's facing his son and lets him square up? What do you think? Dad says, all right, that's not bad. Dad, take him yard, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You, you must always, Easy. yeah, no, you. <laughs> Easy, yeah, I'm so. sure. But how cool is that? I'm sure if Yomar sticks with this, facing dad in the box, might be a pretty cool experience for the family. Heads up over there, guys. Wilson chops that ball foul, a one-two count, two down in the top of the ninth. The West team put up a seven spot back in the seventh to give them this 17 to 10 lead. The East team hasn't scored since the sixth. Bats have definitely slowed down for them. And Bate wanted that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a classic. Oh, come on, Blue. Yes. Come uh, on. Well, uh, I'm a believer. Pitcher wants every every pitch. Any, anything that's close, they definitely won't. But uh. this is, it, you know, I think it's a big pitch. Like, again, you don't you don't want to add any runs to this seven run okay. lead right now. You want to make this big pitch get out of the inning, and hopefully your team have enough to come back and at least make it competitive. Got him on the outside part of the plate. So a strikeout for Infante. Yomar Infante. If we go to the bottom of the ninth, the East team trails by seven. Here are today's PG Cares players of the game. PG Cares grow the game. Julian Martinez, he went yard all the way back in the first. Four RBI for him. Caleb Alexander, you see him right there on your screen. A three-run home run. A three-run double. Six RBI for the West team. All stoic over there. You know he's having a good time in this game, though. The West team, 17 to 10 is their lead. They've worked their way back. Preston Wilson, the manager of this squad. The, the scripts have flipped a little bit. Marlon, the pitching for the West team has stepped it up here in the past couple of innings, putting some zeros up. But the East team, you know they're going to do their best job to try and come back and walk off this game. Well, if you're, you're, if you're the East team right now, your, your job is to try to get the tie and run to the plate. That's That gives you a chance or whatever. You get the tie and run to the plate. Everybody sacrifices. You, you do all those little things you need to do just to get base runners in, in this situation. Yomar Infante leads it off for the East just misses that pitch. Caleb Alexander will have the opportunity to close this one out. It would be great to have the, be the player of the game and get to close the game out and finish that? it off to kind of shut things down. That'll, that'll be a nice story as well. The leather and the lumber getting the job done for his West team, making Houston, Texas proud. Big breaking ball. Fonte's got the bat speed to go along with that pitching you just saw last inning. And, and I'm, I'm sure Preston is telling this pitcher, hey, throw strikes, make him put it in play, no free passes right here. But again, everybody's inning is their inning, so they're trying to pitch in the way that they know and they're used to pitching. And Fonte skies this ball. It'll stay on the infield, calling everybody off as Foster one down for the West. Next batter, EH number 11, Anthony Padillo. They're coming to this inning. Contact is your friend. Make them beat you instead of you giving up uh, opportunities to where you're, you're trying to walk guys or, or, or giving free passes in any way. Hey, by the way, the Skechers Summer Pickleball Championships underway. Available on cbssports.com slash cbssn. We'll get out to you all as soon as we're done here at the East Cop Complex in Marietta, Georgia. 
This is the 12U Perfect Game Select Festival. Marlon Anderson, Danny Wexelman, the West team with a seven run lead in the bottom of the ninth. Caleb Alexander trying to close it down. Anthony Badillo will do his best to get a base runner on for the East team. Badillo looking for his first hit. Badillo tags that ball, and it goes off the top of the wall. He'll head for two and dive in with a one-out double that must have missed by inches, Marlon. It was. It was line drive off the, uh, off the bat. It got very close to getting out of the ballpark, but again, I think he's happy just to be able to get on base here and, like, say, keep passing the baton to the next guy. He keeps the East hopes alive. Caden Borsharding will step up and try to do the same. Borsharding chops this ball on the ground. Foster with the long throw to first, not in time. That ball hit deep in the hole. He did his best, but Borsharding hustles down and legs out the single. Yes, he did. Yeah. And, and one of the things that I think um, shortstop and players like this they'll, they'll learn the shortstop there he was kind of jockeying with the guy at second base you got a seven run lead you need two outs to finish the game he's got to not worry about that runner not jock him not care if he steals the bag or whatever get over get in your position and be in a position to get an out no matter where the ball is hit so two runners on now one down trendon motley will step in motley was on base earlier in the game Made a great play in the outfield as well. The defense and the glove have shown up for this young man. Yes, it has. It, you know, again, all these players have shown just a great job all, 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 all day, just of being able to do the little things. You know, you see him good at bats. You see pitchers that are striking guys out. And Molly lifts this ball into the air. Almeida makes the catch in center field. Two down for the West. It's been a great competitive game. We're just seeing the best 12 year olds, uh, the top 12 year olds in the country. For me, that's been fascinating and seeing these guys out here playing and competing against each other and just re really playing baseball the right way. That's what you want. You know, it's some little details and some fundamental things that they'll learn down the line, but just the way they compete against their fellow, fellow men and fellow guys, I, I just love that and seeing that and being able to be a part of it. It has been a fantastic weekend. Not over yet, though. Chase Gockenbach steps in two on and two down for the East. Get on, get on, get on. Takes that ball outside from Alexander. The managers of these two teams, Lou Collier and Preston Wilson, have also done such a great job with these young men in shaping them on and off this field. I know that the impacts that they have will reverberate for a really long time for these guys and they get to go back to their travel teams to all the other friends that they have and say man i got to learn from some of the best who ever played the game and guys who really really care about these young men on the field you can see the parents here too the sacrifices that they make for their families and, and i think that's what pg does a, a, a great job of you know, Perfect Game does a great job of just really, again, bringing in the best to teach the young next generation. And that's what makes it so fun. You know, you get attached to the kids as they're moving on and you see their development, but it's a great job of Perfect Game just bringing in the best teachers in the game. A full count to Gockenbach. 
And he gets the strikeout. Caleb Alexander gets the K. And the West has won. 17 to 10. They come all the way back and win this game at the 12U Perfect Game Select Festival. Dogpile, that's the only way to celebrate for Marlon Anderson, our entire crew, Steve Banta, Marty Char, Mark Rita. I'm Danny Wexelman. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.